Yo. So, yeah, I managed to figure out how to get like a now playing thing up there. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So today we are just gonna get right into everyone's number one favorite, sorry, favorite episode in the entire franchise. When there is like, when, when, when Ace Attorney fans are asked about an episode they absolutely love with like all their heart, it is turned about Big Top and I can't fucking take myself seriously right now because God, everyone just fucking hates it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to lie to you or anything, but literally everyone hates it. Uh, anyways, with that, I think I'm just gonna get that to shut up and we can just move on right over here. And we're just getting right into it because I did not, like, do anything. I haven't closed the game since last night. Literally, I just leave it like this. <laughs> Is it a good thing? Not really, because I haven't played anything else in a while. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's get into it. Turn about big top. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show! Prepare to witness a man who has mastered the wonder of flight! I'm gonna turn down my mic a little bit, I think. The world's greatest magician, the one, the only, Maximilian Galactica! Hell yeah. Oh my fucking god, he fucking did. Oh damn, it's been like a year since the whole like Edgeworth thing, right? So this has to be in like 2017, right? If not 2018, I don't know. Anyways. Wow, that was like being in a dream. I haven't even caught my breath yet. <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it, Pearly? It was great. There was a dancing bear and a tiger that jumped through a ring of fire. An elephant that rode a giant ball. Not to mention that guy who flew through the air! Yeah, Max Galactica! He was absolutely fabulous! Huh? What, Max? Max Galactica, the world's greatest magician! A magician? No, a magician! Um, Mr. Nick? Huh, what is it, Pearls? Does magic have anything to do with channeling spirits? I don't think it has anything to do with channeling. You don't know about magic, do you, Pearls? I'm sorry. I braved the winter cold and took Pearls to see the circus. It's been six months since that terrible incident in Kurain village. It was during that trying time that I met Pearls. Thankfully, she seems to be recovering from it, and is returning to her normal self. Ah, it's time to go. You're right, we can't miss the last train. Pearls, you remember the train! Because in the last episode, she ran all the way from Kurain to, like, the main city or whatever. Of course I did! But I don't really understand what everyone means by express train. Well, Nick, see you later. I'll come by to help clean the office. It's gotta be spotless for the new year. Trayin? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't worry about it, really. Also, hi, Bengi. You are going to visit Mr. Nick on New Year's? Maybe. I am glad you will get to spend your New Year's with your special someone. Pearly! Look, it's time to go. Happy New Year, Mr. Nick! 
Happy New Year. I really hope it will turn out that way. Well, today wraps it up for, for this year. I hope I can finish cleaning this place up in one day. Oh, hell yeah. Mm. Oh, you were almost freshly caught up with everything. Good job, I'm proud of you. Also, I'm actually really proud of you because you have like a lot of schoolwork to do too, right? Damn. Hello, this is the writing code. Nick, it's terrible. Ah, Maya, perfect timing. Things are terrible here too. Huh? The office is a terrible mess and I have to clean it up. What are you talking about? Um, my dirty office? What are you talking about? Oh, you free Fridays. Okay, cool. Listen, Nick, you have to turn on the TV. Hi, Fleur. The TV. Now let's check in at the scene. Huh. What happened? Thank you, we're here at the Berry Big Circus. The Berry Big Circus has become the center of a sensational murder. The scene has created quite a stir among the throngs of excited onlookers. The very, I mean, the Berry Big Circus. That's the circus we went to, right? They're saying that there was a murder. Yeah, they arrested him too. A arrested who? Max. They arrested Max Galactica! So... Uh, oh, you're just a popular magician who can fly through the sky at will. God, you're just gonna... Okay, Maya said she was a huge fan of Max. Okay, cool, now I can finally stop. I didn't think it would be like automatic thing. Uh, anyways, uh, this is the character uh, that was actually like... Purposely based on BL. <laughs> this is the first character. <laughs> they were like, hmm, what kind of character is popular with BL? Oh, I know. Let's create like some topless hunk with like only a jacket and like tight jeans, or not jeans, tight pants and looking really flamboyant, I guess. With legs that go on for miles with heels, yeah. All right, Nick, I'll see you in two hours at the detention center. Uh-huh, what? See you there. You still got plenty of time to clean up your office later. What? Also, I turned down my mic a bit. Is it, is it still fine? Or is it like a bit too low now? I don't know. Okay. What are they talking about? Why did they arrest Max? You're asking the wrong man on that one, Maya. Maybe he used his magical skills to deal death with a sleight of hand. Maximilian Galactica would never do such a thing. Fabulous! What the young lady just said was absolutely fabulous. What a clever girl. Such a fabulous understanding of events. What's with all this fabulous talk? Welcome to the visitor's room. It's Max! Nick, look! It's the real Maximilian Galactica! Alright, sweetie. Pick a card. Any card. He called me sweetie! Ah, Nick! <laughs> Time's running out, sweetie. Pick a card. Any card. This one. Aha, uh -huh. I thought you would pick that one, sweetie. The Ace of Hearts. Ah, he got it! He got it! Nick, look, he got it! What can I say, sweetie? You've stolen one of my most valued possessions. One of Maximilian Galactica's hearts. Max! <laughs> well, time to make this an absolutely fabulous time! Max, you should let Nick pick a card. Uh, I don't want to steal one of his hearts. <laughs> Nick is like, Ugh! I ain't into that gay shit. Sure. 
Why does this man make cringe? I like how that sentence doesn't make any like any grammatical sense, but it it comes across even better. I only have a heart for my husband, Angie. Uh. And you are? Oh, how silly of me. You must be Sweetie's driver. Her driver? As if I fucking have a license. I have a bike. <laughs> Bitch, I have a fucking bike. <laughs> Whatever. Hurry up and pick a card. Any card. Um, I want this one. So, sweetie, let's be honest here. You came to this visitor's room to visit me, didn't you? Yes! I'm your biggest fan! Fabulous! Absolutely fabulous! Thank you so much! Hey, um, what about my card? Think of it as a souvenir. Well, Nick, I think it's time to get to work. What's the matter, Nick? Why are you looking at the ceiling? I was just thinking about what I should have for lunch. Sweetie, drop Porcupine Head over there. Shower me with your attention, okay? Uh, uh, oh, yes! Absolutely fabulous! Absolutely cringe-inducing. First male inspired character, not interested in men. Listen, they didn't say he was gay. They just said they got inspiration from BL, or they didn't even say it. I think they just some people just fucking found out or something. Maybe they said I don't know. <laughs> they messed up like that. <laughs> Max, I was hoping you could tell me a little bit more about yourself. Fabulous! I think we should get to know each other better, too. Why don't you come sit next to me? Um, there's a big piece of security glass between us. Oh, sweet jeebus, what in the world? If only I could use magic, then I could make this wall disappear. What is this guy talking about? Anyways, lately you've become awfully famous, haven't you, Max? That's Maximilian to you, Porcupine Head. Get it straight. Jeez, people nowadays. They get their panties all in a bunch over nothing. Anyway, Maximilian, you won a very prestigious award recently, did you not? I did indeed! It was fabulous! I mean, he could still be gay. He could just, like, be masquerading. I don't fucking know. I won the Magician's Grand Prix held by the Association of International Magicians. It's an award that recognizes that I am the most fabuloso and fabulous world... That I am the most fabuloso of fabulous world magicians. Okay, I can't, I can't read. <laughs> there was a trophy and a bust. It was a fab... I mean, it was an amazing day. Wow, that's incredible. Isn't it? I am certifiably the greatest magician in the world. I'm going to guess he didn't win a trophy for most modest magician. Tell me about your... <laughs> no, I know I use fabulous quite a lot in my vocab, but come on, this is too much. Y yeah, he, he like saw that word like once and was like, that is my word. It's so fabulous. <laughs> You're signed to an exclusive contract with the Berry Big Circus, correct? That's the long and short of it. You sure do your research, sweetie. I'm impressed. You just can't watch a magician on TV, you know. Magic is so fabulous, you have to see it with your own eyes, sweetie. You're right. You're so right. However, the circus, it's a dinosaur, a thing of the past. Nowadays, no one even cares about what goes on there. Huh? What do you mean? That's why I signed the contract. That's why you signed the contract? Thanks to me, the Berry Big Circus is fabulously popular. People come out in droves to catch a glimpse of the magic of Max Galactica. I revived the dinosaur that is a circus. But to me, it was just another magic trick. Isn't it just wonderful, sweetie? Yes. I made all the crusty circus performances obsolete. But I kind of like the circus performances. 
Maya looks a bit down. <laughs> Tell me what happened at the very big circus. Ah, last night the ringmaster was murdered. The ringmaster? You mean Russell Berry? Someone smashed him over the head, I hear. He was slumped over on the ground. Even though it was the middle of the night, the police presence was fabulous. The police questioned me at length. Questioned you about what? About everything! I was the last one to see the ringmaster before he was murdered. I saw him last evening in his room. So then, why were you arrested? Arrested? Don't make an anthill into a mountain, sweetie. They just wanted to consult with me on matters. That's all. Nick, I don't think Max understands how serious this is. She's right. I think I should shock him back to reality. Before the murder, you met with the ringmaster? Uh-huh. What did you talk about? Things that aren't for your ears. Maya, would you please ask him? What did you talk about with the ringmaster, Max? It was nothing. Small talk, really. We were just having a chat about my salary. Salary? I am the one bringing in the crowds. I think that I should be compensated as such. You agree, don't you? Y yes. That's all you talked about? Of course, it was a fabulous chat. Just fabulous. I mean, ugh, now he's got me saying it. What's the matter, Nick? You look all bent out of shape. Okay, let me show you this. What is that badge? Is it used in a disappearing act? I'm not a magician, Max. I am an attorney. An attorney? Then why are you wasting your time talking to me? He isn't wasting his time, Max. You're... Okay, okay, relax, sweetie. You're just a little over-anxious, I think. Huh. Anyways, I've been curious about something for a while now. What's that? Why do you keep looking at me with such a sad look on your face, sweetie? Because you've been arrested! For murder! Oh, don't be ignorant. They wouldn't arrest someone like me. Why is that? It kind of, he kind of looks like Jeffree Star, and I don't like to be saying that. <laughs> Obviously because I'm the fabulous Maximilian Galactica. So? I'm the very big star of the very big circus. And that means... I'm rich, I'm paid fabulous sums. Which means what? Max? Quit joking around. You've got to be pulling my magic wand. I don't think anyone wants to be pulling your magic wand. <laughs> the police aren't really serious about all this, are they? They don't arrest people as a joke. Look at Max. He's crushed. Well, he needed to wake up and smell the coffee. This is serious business. Um, um... Yes? Porky, I mean... Sir, you're a lawyer, right? Huh. Oh yeah, I'm an attorney. Please, help me, I didn't kill anybody! I didn't kill nobody, I mean... Didn't kill nobody? That's a double negative right there. So that means you did kill somebody. <laughs> I may be more spoiled than a hog in a hamburger mud pit, but a killer? That's insane! I... I could never! M Max? I swear! I just wanted to pay off my daddy's debt! He's back on the farm! Okay, okay, I'll take your case. Really? No! Fuck you, I'm out of here, bitch! Bye! Bye! Oh. <laughs> uh. Thank you much. Uh, you'll sure are nice folks. Um, Max? Yes. What's your real name? It's Billy.
Billy Bob Johns. What's the matter, Maya? He's really just a country bumpkin. <laughs> Damn it, I don't have my sunglasses here. I mean, I do have them here. They're like literally right behind me, but... <laughs> but that's... No, that's too much work. I'm not doing that. <clears throat> I must apologize for not being my absolutely fabulous self just now, sweetie. Uh-huh. Mr. Returney. Yes? A few minutes ago, you took one of my cards, didn't you? Um, now that he mentions it, I did take a card. It was the Ten of Hearts, right? What? Well, how'd he... He got it right! Again! What can I say? You too, you've stolen some of my most valued possessions. Ten of Maximilian Galactica's hearts! Yeah, this this man is straight. <laughs> You're sure to have a lot of hearts, don't you? <laughs> I'm putting my face in you, sweetie. He didn't just call me sweetie, did he? All right, let's make this an absolutely fabulous case. Come on, Nick. Oh god, Maya, not you too. <laughs> Only Ashworth can call me sweetie, but he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. Why would he? <laughs> uh. We're here again. Yep, but this time we are here for work. It hasn't been that long since the crime, so the police are still on the scene. Let's find someone who might know something about what happened. Sounds like a plan. Oh boy, here we go. Where are we going? Uh, sure. Sh we don't say that name around here. He left and he's not coming back. Yeah, so... Um, I think it's like... Uh, it's... Uh, it's kind of strange. Because we mentioned this like barely like last episode. But like... Like... Hi, Inu Mining is back in business, like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but we mentioned it in, in the last episode, at least a little bit, uh, that it is implied that he, like, commits suicide, pretty much. Uh, I can remove that, there's nothing playing right now. I'm just doing this so you can see my face a bit better, because the focus is on me right now, not on the screen. Anyways, so it is implied, but, like, also not really. So in the anime, instead of there being uh, the whole case with Emma and Lana, uh, there is this episode that just focuses on like uh, when they were kids. And then at the end, uh, we have Edgeworth leaving his office and uh, he leaves a note that says, Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. So, yeah. It's not, like, I really thought it was mentioned in the games, but I guess not. Because I looked it up later and I was like, this was not mentioned in the games? <laughs> I was really confused because I could swear it was, but uh, I guess not. You know, it'd be like that sometimes, I guess. Who the hell is Veronica? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, back to the game now. <clears> there <throat> seems to be a dorm where all the performers are per 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 the performers in the circus stay. Really? So we might run into that stoogy clown here, right? He's so kooky. It's you two. Who the who this? Oh, Detective Gumshoe. How is it you guys always seem to know when I'm working a crime scene, pal? Because you're always working, Detective. Well, I'd rather not be always working, but with crime, you don't make your own hours. Oh, that's a book. Cool. If I have to be at the circus anyway, I want to see the lion tamer and the tightrope. 
However, no matter where I go, the show is always the same. Dead body, stage left. Nick! Nick! He complained! <laughs> That's a rarity. Let's get back to business now, okay? Do you want to tell us anything? Do you know who will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow? Of course! It will be Miss Von Karma. Uh, she isn't gonna hit me with her whip again, is she? What do you have to worry about? You only have to see her in court. When she shows up at the precinct, she sounds of that... The sounds of that whip never ends, pal. Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure Miss Von Karma is really interesting and all, but... There's someone else I'd rather talk about. Like who? Like Mr. Edgeworth, of course. You know, Nick's true... Rival. <laughs> Oh, sheep in a pink suit. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Miles Edgeworth. What in the world happened after I went back home? Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't heard what happened to him? Nick won't tell me. Well, to be honest, I'm not at liberty to tell you either. Let's just say he's not around anymore. He's not around? Nick! What does he mean Mr. Edgeworth isn't around? Exactly what he said. He's not around. Edgeworth is gone. Don't say his name again, okay? I'm fucking grieving. <laughs> grieving the loss of my husband. <laughs> Nick. Anyway, the ringmaster of the circus was murdered, wasn't he? Yep, last night around 10 p.m. He died outside in the cold. A pretty sad way to go out, if you ask me. Let me mourn in peace, Maya. <laughs> it was rather cold. This is the scene of the crime, pal. The body was found right over there. Right about where you are standing now. Ah! Oh, <laughs> surprised you, didn't I? I'm not laughing. Excuse me, but do you mind telling me what happened to the victim? His name is Gumshoe, <laughs> not Gumshot. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <coughs> but Gumshoe is like um a, a a name for uh for a detective, I believe. Something like that. I don't remember exactly. The the Gumshot. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh no, that's awful! <laughs> Do you mind telling me what happened to the victim? He was killed by a blow to the noggin, pal. Eek. It's pretty clear cut as far as murders go. He was discovered quickly. But... But... There's just one thing that doesn't quite fit. Ah, there's... there always... Oh, no, sorry. Ha! Huh. There always seems to be something that doesn't quite fit. <laughs> okay. What was this one thing that just didn't quite fit? The thing you mentioned earlier. Footprints, pal. Footprints. Footprints? Look at this picture of the crime scene. What's this? This wooden box under the body. No clue, pal. Some forensics experts took it back and are examining it now. And... and what's so mysterious about the footprints? Whoa, calm down now. Take a good look at the footprints in this picture. The victim's footprints are on the scene. That's right, pal. The problem is... The killer's footprints aren't there! It's like this man just walked over to, to get that, that box and just killed over <laughs> and died. Bingo. Where did the killer come from? And where did the killer run off to? Where did the killer come from Cotton Eye Joe? <laughs> Obviously, there is no way the killer committed this crime while flying. A flying culprit? That's when something just clicked in my head.
There's no way! Flying is impossible! That's right, flying is impossible. Absolutely impossible! <laughs> What's with the hollow laugh, pal? I meant nothing by it, pal. Better stated, it means I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I can get some info about Max out of him. It looks like Max is the most unpopular guy in the circus tent. You know what they say, a bad attitude follows you everywhere. Hmm, he's a bit arrogant, but he didn't seem that bad. But just because someone has a bad attitude, doesn't make them a criminal. It's not just his attitude, I've got proof, pal. Huh? He left something at the scene of the crime. One of his magician's trademarks. An incredibly well-made silk hat. Well, it does have very classy decorative elements. Max uses a cloak, silk hat, and white roses as his sign signature symbols. <laughs> Pretty mundane, aren't they? Who cares if they're mundane? At least they are easy to understand. I must have hit a nerve. That's what he said. Who said? The eyewitness. Huh? Tell us about the eyewitness. Um, so about the eyewitness. Ho ho ho, you know I'm not going to tell you about that. That's the prosecution's trump card. Hmm, oh well. Oh, I just remembered. What? Forgot to mention that you two are barred from entering that lodging house. Why is that? Oh, no reason. Uh, just something I remember, remember to tell you. It must be because that's where the eyewitness is. Let's check it out. Don't you dare, pal. Oh, I dare, pal. Hmm. No. <laughs> Oh, no. I wonder whose room this is. The name tag tag on the door says Mo on it. I guess it's not here. Thank God. Wow, it's a real mess in here. My room's probably, probably worse, though. Oh, well. I give up. We'll have to come back later. Things are broken. <laughs> Clown equipment is so funny looking. He's got a balancing ball, a unicycle. He's even got a trampoline. But they're all broken. Maybe he was just a little too excited during practice. Who knows with that guy? Maybe that's part of the gag? Interesting. The circus stage sure doesn't look this small from out in the audience. Wow, this is where they all perform, isn't it? Nick, do some somersaults! I'm not doing any somersaults. Why not? You look like you'd be great at it. Why do I look like I'd be great at somersaults? Uh-huh, Nick? It wasn't me. He's coming this way! Ah! Close, there's the tiger. Nick, you're too young to die! Nick! Stay! Stay! Heal! I'm still here. I'm not dead. Yet. Nick! Nick, are you okay? <laughs> Scared you, didn't I? Regent is such a cute tiger, isn't he? What's the matter? You two sure are quiet. Don't what's the matter, me? Nick, he almost died there. Ha! Huh, he wasn't anywhere close to getting hurt, let, uh, let alone dying. This little tiger hardly ever bites people. And besides, people normally never get to play with a wild tiger, right? So if you think about it, you're actually really lucky. 
Huh? You agree, don't you? Uh, I guess. What do you mean you guess? Why are you agreeing with her? Woohoo! Your costume! Heh. <laughs> it's cute! I wanna try it on! A costume? You mean my clothes? You don't mind letting me try it on, right? Uh, I guess not. Really? <laughs> You're the best! Wow, the tables turned quickly on that one. So much for the tiger thing. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Regina Berry, the renowned re animal tamer of the Berry Big Circus. My name's Maya Fay. I'm a spirit medium. Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. When you put us up next to an animal tamer, I bet we really look odd. Nice to meet ya! Uh, likewise. Hey, Regina, what do you know about what happened last night? You mean the murder? Uh-huh. My dad was murdered. Oh, I see. Wait, what did you just say? So, the ringmaster was your... Yep, the ringmaster was my dad. I'm so sorry about what happened to him. Why do you say you're sorry? Huh? Anyways, everyone was here practicing last night. Even your dad? Yes, everyone was here. We finished up around tea, tea, 10 p.m. <laughs> After that, everyone went off on their own. I was the only one who stayed around here. Why did you do that? I was playing with Regent. Regent, so she was with that beast. That's when the police showed up and they took me to check things out. Dad was dead. For someone whose father was just murdered, she seems awfully perky. I wish she would tell us more about her dad. That's an incredible that's incredible that you are an you are an animal tamer. I can't read. If you say so. It has to be really scary. Scary? Why? Huh? Regent isn't scary, he's cute! Ever since Leon died, Regent has been my best friend. Leon? Yes, Leon the lion! Leon the lion, Regent and Regina. Interesting name choices. Leon... He died? Yes, actually, he was killed. My dad killed him. What? Why did he do that? I'm not sure why he did it. It's tough not to get charmed when she looks at you with those innocent eyes. Oh, I gotta go to pretense. Dumb. After practice was over, Dad went right back to his room. His room? Yes. That door right over there leads to the ringmaster's room. Hmm. I don't know why, but he went off to his room in a hurry. I wonder what happened. The ringmaster's room. It's probably got a, probably a good idea to check it out for myself. <laughs> Definition of clueless? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> This was the ringmaster's room? Yes, this room belonged to the victim. Which means this must be where Max met the ringmaster last night. Now that you mention it, that is what he said. I wonder what... Hmm, that's an interesting poster. Huh, it's a poster of Max! I want it! I want it, Nick! I want it! I want to get out of here! It's a table for guests. There are some papers scattered on top. Ah, look at this! Max's salary is written on this piece of paper. Yikes! What is it? I didn't know that a magician... This salary is incredible! She looks like she's about ready to pass out from shock. How much is it? How much is it? 
That much? Incredible, huh? You can say that again. This must be the paper they used to negotiate Max's salary. The ringmaster signed and dated it. What's the matter, Nick? Max definitely got a raise. But this document is dated a week ago. Interesting. What am I hearing? You may not know this, but they call this a tailcoat. And they call this the face of someone who already knew that. Hmm. What? A scrap of white paper is sticking out of the coat pocket. Huh? Where? Where? Calm down, Maya. You can't just go rummaging it through people's coats. Huh? You always make me feel like I'm doing something wrong. There's a lot of posters here, don't you think? There are indeed. So many posters that they aren't likely to miss one, are they? Maya, we're supposed to be the honest ones around here. But, but you didn't even notice that I took one. Ah, <sighs> she already swiped one. <laughs> You're incorrigible, you know that? Okay. Unless there's something up here. What's this? All of these frames look the same. They almost look like thank you cards. It looks like every year the ringmaster made donations to charity. To the Robot Clown Research Center. You're kidding, right? What? They may be a perfectly reputa reputable charity in the field of advanced tomfoolery. I wonder what happens actually if I show her the crime photo. What about this? Oh, okay, she doesn't care. Love that for her. Please, I can't be stuck already. <laughs> Max isn't here. He must be in questioning. Aw, I wanted to see a magic trick. Should be back in a little bit. I guess so. Damn it, where the hell am I supposed to go? Okay, I gotta go here and examine some things, I guess. This is the only place that the snow has been trounced upon. I'm also in questioning. <laughs> Well, pardon me for my English. That's not my first language. <laughs> the murderer was sloppy leaving all these prints all over. No, 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 no. We're the ones who left the prints. An investigation can be a messy thing sometimes. What? I also slipped and fell in that spot over there. The other detectives all got a good laugh when the prosecutor whipped me. Thank God there was all this snow around to bring down the swelling. You know what? I'm fucking stupid. I just not realized you're talking <laughs> I was like, your name seems really familiar. Where have I seen it before? <laughs> I was like, but I huh, do you follow the <laughs> Oh well, fake friend, fake friend. Damn. <laughs> it's great to know that the police aren't worried about preserving the evidence. Bro, listen. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This year I finally won an air conditioner. What? You didn't have an air conditioner? Did you ride your Triceratops to work too? And what do you mean you won an air conditioner? You didn't buy it? I can't afford one of those things. But I got lucky and won it as a door prize at the annual police Christmas party. They really pay you peanuts, don't they? Peanuts? I don't even get paid enough for peanut butter, let alone peanuts. Poor gumshoe. 
There's some evidence under the tarp over there. Hey, watch it, pal. The killer is behind that tarp. Ah! Ho <laughs> ho Gotcha. I was just kidding. <laughs> okay, Santa Claus. The safety lights around the circus are kept on all night long. So they should have been on at the time of the murder. So he's saying the murder took place in the light? How strange. How strange indeed. Huh. Okay, let me just look around Moe's room, maybe. I don't know. What's this? Look at the ceiling. It looks like someone punched a hole in it. You're right. I wonder what happened. Hmm. I don't, want to, don't even want to imagine what goes on in here. Okay. Already looked at that. Awesome! Look at these shoes! They're great! Forget the shoes. Check out the great gag banana peel. You sure it wasn't Mo's snack after lunch? Are you blind? Look at how many scratches there are from people sleeping on it. Mo's got an ex excellent pair of pajamas laid on his bed in an excellent manner. What? Those are pajamas? You mean he goes to bed dressed as a clown? Ew. All those clown costumes lined up like that. I don't know about you, but it's creepy. Look at the collection he's got. It's incredible. It must be a, collect it must be a collection of clown costumes from around the world. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. What is it now? She better not want me to try one of those on. I was thinking of starting a costume collect cl collection myself. I'll call it World Spirit Channels. We can... Display it in our office. In our office? As soon as you start paying the bills, you can say that. Mo seems to be a voracious reader. Look at all the hard books he has here. Clowns for dummies. The joke's on you. Treat your peons right. And the classic funny jokes are funny. Wow. Mo is very studious. The joke's on you, huh? What the? There's a string of carrots here. How strange. The carrots seem to come in all different shapes. Weird. Can't tell if Mo just likes carrots or if he's using them for some sort of gag. Nick, you can see the scene of the crime from here. You can even tell that the ground has been disturbed. It's right in front of this window, about 30 feet, any 30 feet away. Maybe he collected them? Wouldn't they rot? <laughs> I guess it wouldn't have been strange for someone to have seen the crime from here. I mean, assuming they're real anyways. Which I doubt they are, but still. Okay, do you... Is there anything I can, like, show you? Okay, whatever. Okay, he literally cannot tell me about shit. Not the crime footer either, no. Okay, love that for us. Back here. There's nothing here. Uh, back to big top. Silk hat is Max's. That's right. It's beautiful, isn't it? I thought of the idea for wearing the hat. Huh? Really? Yeah. He took my sketch to the hat shop. And they made a custom hat for him based off the sketch. There is only one of these silk hats in the entire world. Isn't that cool? Okay. She doesn't know about those. Doesn't know about that. Tell me about Max. It's Max! Hey, where is Max now anyways? Y you don't know? 
Nope. He's been arrested. He was charged with the murder of your father. It's okay. Nick and I will help him. Max isn't the guy, is he? I mean, the criminal. Sparkly, yes. Of course he's not. I'm worried about so many things right now. Huh. Like what? <laughs> okay. What about yourself? Alright, I look so cute in this picture. Don't you think I look cute? Don't ya? Don't ya? Sure do. No objections here. She's 16. <laughs> She's like Pearl but Circus Edition. <laughs> She looks like eight. Okay, what about here? Nick, look at all the cute trophies. Indeed, just look at all the awards this circus has won. Like, all county quiz champions, ringmasters association, mini golf master, beer belly balloon bounce champ, pet grooming grand prix. Wow, the ringmaster was multi-talented in ways I could have never imagined. Okay, maybe 12. <laughs> Look at all the stars on this poster. This must have been the poster they used to promote their public appearances. Posters are the way to go, aren't they? What do you mean? We should make posters to promote our law firm. Spine-tingling legal action. Mind-numbing legalese. You will say wow. Or perhaps hold it. Don't miss out on a stunning life or death courtroom thrill ride. With those taglines, our law firm would sink faster than the Titanic. This is where the ringmaster applied his makeup. It's quite a collection of the most understated colors. Shocking pink, for example. This one says it is 100% all-natural organic mascara. And this one says, sensitive enough for a baby, strong enough for a mime. The ringmaster must have been really concerned about skin care. Skin care, very metrosexual. This is strange. Everything else looks nice, but this desk looks old and cheap. I don't think it was the mascara that was going on the baby. <laughs> I think it was something else. Like, face paint or something, I don't know. There's a really big photo on the desk. It's a picture of Regina and her father, the ringmaster. He really loved her, didn't he? Regina was lucky to have such a wonderful father. Oh, well, wait, let me, uh... Show... Her the badge. Nope. Nothing. Where the hell am I supposed to go? <laughs> I'm lost! I'm not even an hour in and I'm already lost! Oh, I hate this case! Don't Google stuff! Oh my god! You keep Googling stuff! Why do you do that to yourself? Okay, what about... The only place we haven't been is, is back home. Alright, we got lots of things we have to look into. No time for slacking. Let's get going. Okay. What's the matter? You seem down. Maximilian Galactica. Who would have guessed he was a country pumpkin? Okay. That's just the same old, same old. Oh! <laughs> I thought it was about something else. <laughs> no, it's a bumpkin. Okay, where the hell am I supposed to go? It's a snack stand. They have hot dogs, hamburgers, and drinks. Not to mention candy and popcorn. They've even got snow cones. I just found out that my sister-in-law puts mascara on her 10-month-old baby boy when he takes him for professional pigs. I'm sorry. I'm the only one who finds his... Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit much. Oh, 
on a 10 month old baby. Like, no. Who would eat snow cones in the middle of winter? Nick, do you think we can buy some snow cones? Look around, there's some tons of snow piled up all around here. Yay! Wait a second. There's no syrup though, I want syrup. Hopefully she doesn't notice that this colored snow in the corner! <laughs> Oh my god. Nick! The entrance is right there. Maya, the circus is closed today. No clowns, no elephants, no shows. I know that. Nick, you can get your picture taken with Dolly the elephant. There is no Dolly. Not today. I know that too. Oh well. I'll just have to take a picture with whoever I stumble across. Ah, it's not like we're here on business or anything. This is the box office where they sell all the tickets for the circus. They also sell programs. I forgot to buy one when we came to the circus last time. So then why don't you buy one now? Hmm, sounds like a plan. Oh no! It looks like I forgot my wallet. If you want me to buy it for you, just ask me already. You know, I'd never do that to you, Nick. Sure. Hmm... This door must lead to the lodging house. No entry to unauthorized personnel. Do you really need to say no entry if no one's actually entering? It's almost like a send riddle, isn't it, Nick? I'm not even going to justify that question with a response. I bet all of the stars stay at, the lo at that lodging house. Look! Look! It's Max! Even when you don't want to see him, poof! He's right in front of you. Sure, the sign says very big circus, but looking around, it might as well be Cirque de, Salac Cirque de Galactica. The stars on his cheek sure are dreamy. The stars? <laughs> How about I draw a star on your cheek, Nick? I've got a marker. Nah, nah, it's alright. Still nothing in Moe's room. Where have I not been? I've... I've been... What about Maya? What do you have to say about Maya? Maya, you're a spirit channeler? Yep. I'm still in training though. That sounds like fun. I think you should join us at the circus. Uh-huh. As a spirit channeler? Yeah, you'd be a big hit. Really? She said, she says, that's, that's exactly what she says. She says I'd be a big hit. I think she's just being nice. Okay, here's the only place I haven't looked at things yet. Look, that's where Max comes out during the show. I gotta admit, that was a pretty cool effect. We're planning for me to start coming out of the line during the show. That's great, Regina. Yeah, it will ride on Regent's back and jump out of the lion's mouth. I want to try it too. I'll ride on Nick's back and jump out of the lion's mouth. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about this girl. Hell yeah, step ladder. Ah, uh, ladder. It's just a step ladder. What's the difference? They do the same thing, right? I think you should stick with the basic facts of the matter. Oh, uh, okay. It's not even worth arguing with her on this one. <laughs> but, but we do it every time we see a, see a stepladder anyway. The seats are kind of far away, don't you think? This game and ladders. This game and ladders. They are, but it also means that lots of people can fit in the big top. He's right. We can fit 500 people into a show. 500? That's amazing. Flying around above that many people is a real rush. At least that's what Max said. Yeah, I'm... I have. When did this show up? What's on your mind? Okay, never mind. Regina, what's the matter? What's on your mind? Hmm? I'll tell you, Maya. But just you. Oh. Um, well... What? Really? 
and then... Oh my, that's incredible, Regina. Come on, Nick, there's no reason to pout. Don't worry about me. Regina told me that someone professed their love to her. Professed their love? Not only that, it was Maximilian Galactica. I wonder how many people have stolen one of his hearts anyways. And then, on the exact same day, another person professed their love for her as well. What? Who was it? Someone named Trillo. Trillo? Apparently he is a tenor who sings in the circus. Hmm, haven't met him yet. Regina seems to be quite the hit with the men in the circus. She must have some sort of strange power over them. You're not kidding. Two people in one day. Even I want to profess my love for her. Me too, she's so cute. Phoenix, she's 16! Can we fucking not? I hate this game. Ah! <laughs> now, please, yes! Finally some fucking progress. Turns out I'm just stupid. Huh. Hey Nick, look over there. What? There's someone over there. Uh, excuse me? Hello. Wow, he sure is a quiet one. Excuse me? Uh, me? Yes, you work at the circus, don't you? N no, I'm just your everyday average Joe. An average Joe who just happens to hang out at the circus? I don't think so. Yes, I am. I've got nothing to do with what's going on here. He's lying. Like any regular person would hang around a circus. Dressed like that. I'm an attorney. My name is Phoenix Wright. I am a spirit medium. My name is Maya. Well, I am... Um, I just happen to be, um, passing by. I don't suppose you happen to be some kind of carny. Not a carny. I'm a p performer, actually. I'm v v ventriloquist. Ventriloquist? He, 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 I'm, I'm Benjamin w w Woodman. Your last na name is Woodman? <laughs> yes, th th that's right. But everyone c c calls me p p p Ben. I can't do that. <laughs> it just sounds forced and doesn't sound good at all. Ha, huh, yes, yes, yes. That's your alias, right? I believe they call it a stage name. Excuse me, Ben? Uh, yes, you mean me? About the murder, I'd like to talk to you about the details, if I may. R really? I'm just a regular normal guy. I don't know... This guy's so nervous, he's creeping me out. Nick, cheer up! Just try and smile! Um... Taking a look at this? Okay, I guess. Guess not. Yeah, let's just. Would you mind telling us something about Max? Maximilian Galactica? Max? He's not very nice. Did he just say that Max is not very nice? Uh, ow, my head hurts. Yikes. I hope he's okay. It sounds like you just popped the gasket. Ben, so you're a ventriloquist? I'm just a regular guy. You already told us that you were a ventriloquist. Oh, yes. Nick, don't yell at him. You can't do that. I can't help it. He's making me nervous. Ben, would you mind showing me some of your skills as a ventriloquist? I can't say it for some reason. Well, I... right now, my... my pee pee pee. Uh, I, uh, uh, he's contagious.
Is there anything I have to show you? I fucking know. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, here we fucking go! Hello? Kablammo! Congratulations! You're the big waiter! The one millionth visitor to the room of one Mr. Mo Curls, aka me! Earplugs must find earplugs! To celebrate this momentous occasion, would you care for an organic grape? Just one! Did you get my joke right there? <laughs> I will start giving you more than one! Um. No, no, no. If, if it was funny, it is your duty as a human being to laugh. People who don't laugh are usually last seen in Lansing. Catch my drift? <laughs> um, Maya? <laughs> this is like some Faustian nightmare. Hunst? What's. What? Come on, it was funny. Clowns are always funny in my book. In my book, they're just funny looking. You sure do have great taste in clothes, girly. Look at that garb. You look just like Greta Garb. Oh. <laughs> Why am I making him sound like almost posh? <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> no, Nick, you can't. You know, I can excuse a bad joke or two, but this stooge keeps laughing at his own jokes. That's why what, what I object to. Okay, okay, I get it, but you have to admit he is kind of funny. Uh, no, I do not have to admit that because he isn't. I don't want to replicate his laugh. It's bad enough. Could you please tell us more about the very big circus? It's a very big story. You sure you got that kind of time? And he... And the hits just keep on coming. Hmm. The circus has been in business for 20 years. We all performed under the guidance of the ringmaster, Russell Berry. 20 years? Wow. Working in the circus is never easy, especially nowadays. With movies, TV, and bowling, there is just too much competition. But, but, I love the circus. I love it too! That is why I've been here for 20 years. We work hard to keep the show running. No one sends in the clowns on us. Nick, he just made a joke. Laugh! Ha 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 ha. The ringmaster was a real big shot in the circus world, a real class act. Even when there were no customers, Russell would use his own money to pay me because he knew that I had a family to care for. He was happy to take care of his employees. I see. How could anyone do that to such a wonderful man? Can I uh, show my attorney's badge? Okay, apparently not. Mo. Wiggity 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 what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mo. Nick was born without a sense of humor. Don't worry about it. How can you fault someone for being born that way? Let's talk about the murder. Ah, let's see. It must have taken place around 10 p.m. last night. After rehearsals were finished, I was tuckered out, so I came back here. After I went to bed, that's when I caught a peek of it. Caught a peek? Of the crime. Just as we suspected. This guy's the eyewitness of the crime. You say you saw the crime. Do you mind telling me what you, what you saw? Well, the police told me that I can't share my story with others. Don't say a word, pal. I'm just gonna have to let these lips stay zipped. That's not fair. I guess you're right. Maybe I can tell you a few details. But only if you can get old stiff lips here to make with the funny. Stiff lips? Wait, do you mean me? Nick, you can do it! <clears throat> What's the matter? Just getting ready. Okay, do you know why I, Phoenix Wright, am a great lawyer? Because I'm right all the time. I 
At least his expectations are low. I wouldn't let him quit his day job. Yeesh, cut a guy some slack. At least he was funnier than Chuckles over there. It wasn't the greatest joke I've heard, but you did try, so I'll tell you what I saw. I'm sorry he's incapable of being funny. <laughs> incapable of being funny, sure. That night, once I had tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Once I heard it, I jumped out of bed. That's when I saw. Without question, without a doubt, it was that magician. That's all I saw, but it just proved what terrible that man how terrible that man really is. Yeah, they sure are part of his wardrobe. He knows more about Max than he's letting on. Tell me about Russell Berry. The ringmaster was truly ahead of his time. He would always add new elements to the show. New elements? When you've been a performer for a long time, your act starts getting a bit stale. Hmm. I realize that even my act, even my act can get a bit long in the tooth. Sometimes my joke can be a bit, um, old fashioned. A bit long in the tooth? But that make believer takes things too far. Make believer? The magician! The one that thinks he's all high and mighty. He had the gall to say to me, You're one of those funny types, right? What does he mean, one of those? Well, the joke's on him now. On him? Yep. He's got on... He got on everyone's nerves. The day of the murder. Go ahead. Nope. No way. Just forget I said anything. That is still hiding something about Max. Tell me about Max, you piece of shit clown. Hmm. If he thinks he can kill the ringmaster, it's only just that he should die. It's only just that he should die, too. Mo! Sorry, I crossed the line. But he truly is a disgusting human being. Why do you hate him so much? Let me tell you this one story. The morning before the murder, something terrible happened. Max clonked Ben right over the head, as hard as he could. Ben? The ventriloquist with the speech impediments. You should go to the cafeteria and F investigate for yourselves. The cafeteria? Let's just say there's gotta be something interesting there. Oh god, shut up. Ah, yes. The very big circus is very big, isn't it? You should always carry a map with you to get around. Oh, thank you. Um, this is an atlas. Oh, I kill myself, really. I'm dying here. Coronary, coronary. Now he's just laughing to hear his own voice. Okay, bye! See you never, hopefully. But that's unfortunately not how this game works. Ew, this place is gross! This must be because of last night. They didn't have time to clean up after dinner because of the murder. It reminds me. What was it that Mo said? He said that yesterday morning, Max clonked Ben over the head he the head hair. He also said that there's gotta be something interesting there. Nick, what's gotta be interesting? Don't ask. Huh. This is strange. There's nothing on top of this stand. Look here! Max is written on it. It must be his VIP table. Isn't it a bit small to be a VIP table? You wouldn't be putting a 10 course meal on this. Well, he could still eat hamburgers, right? Ah, bulletin board for, um, bulletins. It doesn't look like there are any useful clues posted here. Boring. Maybe we should leave a juicy tidbit for someone to read. Juicy? 
you know, like a fake clue. Hmm, maybe something like message from the killer. Give it up, Maya. You know Gumshoe would take it all seriously. What's this? It must be a juice bottle or something. Oh, watch out, Nick. There's broken glass all over the floor. You're the one that's practically barefoot, Maya. <laughs> hmm, broken bottle just lying in the middle of the floor. Do you think it means anything? There's gotta be something interesting here. Huh? Looks like we're going to have to go back and meet with him. Him? I suppose it's Max. Oh, it's my two sweeties. Welcome to the detention center. Ah, did he just call me his sweetie again? What's on today's agenda? What can I help you with? Well, we've gathered quite a few clues. Wonderfully fantabuloso. I mean, fabulous. That's why we came to meet with you again. What's wrong? Quit making such a scary face. Okay then, Max, let's make this absolutely fabulous. We heard a lot about you at the circus, Max. Ah, you must mean from the dinosaurs? How were those Jurassic geriatrics? Max, you aren't very popular with the other performers, are you? Yes, 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 sweetie. That's what they call jealousy. G-E-A-L-O-U-S-Y. They are absolutely jealous of my absolutely fabulous self. People who really understand can see the obvious differences between us. People who really understand? For instance, my sweetie pie. Hmm, so Regina understands him, huh? I plan on getting married to her. She is truly my sweetie pie princess. This is a... Uh, it's, it's a lavender wedding. <laughs> Isn't that what it's called when it's like... Used to like cover up that you're actually... Gay? Like, you marry someone of the opposite sex just to cover up that you're actually gay. <laughs> Anyways. Wow, that's so cool. It's already in the works. Oh? That's strange. Regina never said anything about actually marrying this Joker. You met with the ringmaster on the night of the murder? Yes, I was with him around 10 p.m. once I was done with practice. I went to his room right after we finished. We found the ringmaster's body in the plaza in front of the lodging house. Yeah, I heard about that. He needed to step out for a bit, so I waited in his room for him to return. Huh? Sorry, Max. I have something I must attend to right now. Do you mind waiting for me right here? It's pretty cold outside. Where's your coat? It's alright. I'll be right back. It should only take about ten minutes. And then... I waited for him. But he never came back. Did he go to the plaza where the body was discovered? Possibly. The snow had tapered off a bit, but it was still very cold outside. But I have no idea what he did- what he went off to do. Can I ask you... Can I ask what you do with such an exorbitant salary? You've already covered this point. I'm paying off my father's debt. How could he possibly have such a... Large amount of debt? For example, say you rented a video. Perhaps you forgot about it for, say, a short period of about 10 years. You would have the biggest late fee known to man. It's kind of like that. Wow. Now I can see how you can get that much debt. That makes sense now. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. What about this? 
Fabulous. No, I don't want you to sign it. Ah, this is my silk hat. It's the only one of its kind in the world. It's one of my most prized possessions. This silk cat proves that I was somewhere else. Where did they find this? Huh, sweetie? They found it at the murder scene. Oh! I, I... I don't know nothing about nothing. Hell, Max is so pathetic like this. Max must be really confused. Maximilian Galactica, no matter when you see me, you get shivers, don't you? Silk hat, the cloak, the white roses on my chest. They're my symbols. You know I had to cut the number of symbols to three? Really? You had quite a few to begin with then, huh? Yeah, his eyelash just pops off every time and then he just like, oh, sorry, let me just put it right back. <laughs> Well, I thought that you could never have too many symbols. Sunglasses, beauty marks, soft pillows for lips, a beard, buck teeth. I gave all sorts of symbols a shot. But if I forgot one when I put up my makeup, everyone would forget who I am. That's awful, especially for a magician. It has to be the Magatama then. Let's try this. Last night, you met with the ringmaster, correct? To negotiate your salary and such. Exactly, we reached an agreement about the salary for my six-month-old contract. That's the truth? The whole truth? What do you mean? You just went to his office to negotiate your new salary? I hate lies and I hate liars even more. What are you insinuating? Do you have any proof that I did something other than negotiate my fee last night? Yes! That, that's... It was on the table in the ringmaster's room. You weren't lying when you said that you received quite a raise. Is there a problem with being well compensated? Not with the compensation, just with the date. This is dated a week ago. Max! You finished your contract negotiations a week ago. F fabulous! All right, I'll tell you the truth. That night, the ringmaster called me to his room. He called you? Why did he do that? A booty call! <laughs> Sorry, sweetie, that's private. The ringmaster called him. I wonder if there was some sort of problem. Um, Max, perhaps you could share what with me what you two spoke about. Well, not if I don't have to. Isn't this why the ringmaster called you into his room that night? Isn't this why you were called to the ringmaster's room that night? Where did you get that? The cafeteria, but you already knew that, didn't you? Oh, of course! It fell and broke on the floor. He's still hiding something else. Max. What is it, my sweetie? It didn't fall and break on the floor. You used this bottle to... Ben. You nailed him. <laughs> Over the head with this bottle, didn't you? God, I'm such a child. I, I'm, I, I apologize. And that's why you got called to the ringmaster's room that night. F fabulous! You might as well be a magician. Perfect unlock. The truth is, yesterday morning during breakfast we had a run-in. You mean you had a fight with Ben, the ventriloquist. You could put it that way. Why did you fight with him? Ben seems like such a quiet man. You fought about my sweetie pie. You mean Regina? That ill-bred creep told my sweetie pie princess that he was in love with her. Would you put up with that? 
Ilbred? Are you talking about the same Ben? Told her he was in love with her? Are you sure this is Ben we're talking about? All I can say is that he made me mad and I had to tap him on his head, on his hard head. That's when the ringmaster called me and I realized it was my chance. Your chance? That's when I went to his room and I laid out all the, laid it all out on the table. I asked him to let me marry my sweetie pie. What? The ringmaster told me that it sounds good to me. Oh yeah, Max is 21. I forgot about that. I remember that was like, uh, that's weird. Like last time and... Uh, ben is 31. Regina is 16. Oh boy, we just it just keeps getting better, doesn't it? That's why my sweetie pie is my sweetie pie and no one else's. Hmm, I see. Since Ben was causing me so much trouble, I realized I had to shut him up. Not <laughs> to me with age gap. <laughs> oh god. Shut him up? Um, what do you mean by shut him up? You don't know, do you, my sweeties? Trillo can't say a word, not without Ben. Trillo? The puppet, the ventriloquist's puppet. His real name is Trillo Quist. Bye! Fuck! God, I hate this game. The punny names, I mean... <laughs> they get worse. They... they get worse. They get worse. <laughs> okay, anyways... But a puppet doesn't talk. I know, that's why I hid it. Before the police came and took me away, of course. If that puppet started flapping off at the ball side, I'd be screwed. You hid him? You mean the ventriloquist's puppet? You are so smart, sweetie. Um, where did you hide him? What, sweetie? You aren't thinking of trying to add him to my defense, are you? Well, Ben does seem awfully lonely without his puppet. No, but that's the name of the puppet. His name is Benjamin Woodman. <laughs> Which I guess is like, ha ha. Like, but that's about all it is. But Trillo, Quist, I hate it so much. Fabulous! That should have taught him a lesson. Okay, I hit Trillo in the ringmaster's room. You don't mind going there and getting Trillo for me, do you, my sweets? No problem, none at all. Thank you, Max. You know, I can't stand to see my sweeties in a jam. And don't go hiding puppets. This entire episode is just... Phoenix Wright tired of everything. <laughs> huh, Ben's not here anymore. Yeah, I wanted to ask him something. It's cold out, he's probably in, in the tent. Which is where I have to go too. What do you think, Nick? I wonder if we've been making any progress. Don't be so negative, of course we are making progress. Yeah, I can tell we're making progress because new dialogue boxes keep showing up. So that's great. That's great progress. I'm like, yes, progress. But everyone loved the ringmaster. And there's no sign of footprints on the scene. 
There's still a lot of mysteries left to be solved. Of course. And now Regina isn't here. I'm not seeing how that's related. Okay, let's go to the ringmaster's room, I guess. It looks the same as always. Great big mess. Considering how messy it is, I bet they wouldn't notice if another poster went missing. Will you just stop it, you poster pilferer? I'm just kidding. You know I already got one of those post this these posters. You mean stole one of those posters. Yeah, uh, let's focus on what Max told us. He said that he had Trillo somewhere in this room. Trillo. Oh, the ventriloquist puppet. If I were a puppet, where would, where, where would I be hiding it? Nick, look at all the cute trophies. Indeed, just look at all the awards the circus has won. Like, all this country... Okay, we... Hmm. There's something shoved under the bookshelf. This is... That's Trillo! That's Ben's puppet! I think you're right. We'll give it back to him later. An operatic tenor who doubles as Ben's sidekick. Cool. Why do I have to carry this thing? Good on you, Phoenix. Oh! Hey, Ben! Uh, um, uh, hello. Hello to you, too. It's awfully cold today, don't you agree? Y yeah, uh, I do indeed. Do you think it's cold, Nick? I don't see how talking about the weather is helping our case. Ah, oh, Ben, this is yours, isn't it? Yes, that's mine. Here you go. All right, Maya. Let's get going. It's that time, isn't it? See you around, Ben. Okay. So, Nick, where are we going next? Let's see. Maybe we should go talk to... Hey, wait! Who said that? What are you looking at? I'm right here, you blind wench. What's your problem anyways? Don't you know how to properly greet someone? Ben? Is that you, Ben? No, 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 no. I, I would never. It was me. Yeah, me. Down here. You... You're Trillo? That is Mr. Quist to you, sir. Learn some manners before you just blurt out my name. Now try speaking to me again, but this time with some proper respect. Not again, huh? Mr. Quist. Is that better? No! Look at me when I'm talking to you, you 8-bit excuse for an attorney! Trillo, we talked about insulting people. You promised! But he was mocking me! Not being mean to bullies was not included in, in, in the deal. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the judge. <laughs> I'm sorry, Trillo. Nick, what just happened? Trillo is still a puppet, right? A oh, ventriloquist puppet. Hey, who do you think you are calling me a puppet? Tell us what you know about the murder. You talking to me? I said you talking to me? Don't look at him when you're talking to me. Trillo Quist, you behave, young man. Shut up, Woody. What murder are you talking about? You mean the one where they off the old man? I guess so. No need to make such a fuss about things. That old mutt paid us all peanuts. Trillo, you can't say things like that. I didn't raise you to be that kind of puppet. Don't you have nerve pills or something to take right now? These two are really an odd couple, aren't they, Nick? Okay, okay, I'll talk. Graham's got clobbered over the head. Again. Apparently, showing the badge doesn't work here either. Let me lay it all out for you. 
The pace sucks and the clown sucks and my partner has his hand up my pants. Your partner? You mean Ben? Yeah, the creepy old guy who f never finds it in himself to leave me alone. Tell him to back up for me, will ya? He's just another one of the dorks around here. Oh, my. But I'll be fair, and this cesspool of human garbage masquerading as performers, I found my Madonna. Your... Madonna? Regina, my lovely Regina. She is stunning, right, Ben? Oh, I'm not sure if I would go that far. You'll have to excuse him. He does not understand what he speaks. I, on the other hand, am an appreciator of true beauty, hence why I shall marry her. Can I... Okay, so the puppet doesn't have an age. <laughs> Mary? You, you're going to marry Regina? That's right. She doesn't quite realize the joy that waits her, does she? I think I'm beginning to see why she seemed troubled. Oh, she... I don't care. It is my choice, not hers. We're getting hitched. I know you think that, but... But what? I gave her a special gift. I gave her the wonderful gift of song. You gave her a song? Well, I have a renowned tenor. You'll be happy to know, Pepper. Happy to know that I have decided to grace you with one of my songs. Me, 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 me. No. <laughs> the rest is private. Well, um, the melody is pretty good. But those lyrics, I think they need a little work. Who asked you? I am the artist here. The ringmaster got knocked upside his cheap head by that flying fraud. I thought that said knocked up. <laughs> the ringmaster got knocked up. <laughs> oh, interesting. I see. <laughs> oh, we're not even two hours in and I'm... <laughs> you mean Max Galactica? Why do you say that? Willow, straighten up. Don't accuse people like that. Straighten up? I am made of wood. Besides, you were there. You know what happened. You were there? Heh <laughs> If you're not interested, then I'll let you in on the facts. Mm, well, thanks. Now that Trillo's here. Now that Trillo's here, does that mean you can talk normally now? Hey, buttface. Ah. You must be looking forward to tomorrow, aren't you, Mr. Ambulance Teaser? Uh... You know, it's time to get rid of that pesky ma magician once and for all. Tr Trillo? Enough jibba jabba. Let's get to court already. Ah, uh, hey, wait a second. Nick, what's going on? He's a witness for tomorrow's trial. Ah. <sighs> What in the world happened with Ben and Trillo? Quite a pair, those two. Oh no, now what? Yeah! Hey, welcome back, Nick. That monkey! Ah, my badge! The monkey stole it! What? <laughs> Mr. Attorney, that face was so cute, you looked so completely dumbfounded. Regina! You! That monkey! Hey, no need to get angry, okay? But, my attorney's badge! Don't worry, I'll help you out. Okay, if you say so. If I don't give my badge back, how can I flash it? By the way, the monkey's name is Money. Money the monkey. His name is not Money? Okay. The monkey is called Money? Yes. Well, the rich ape just stole my attorney's badge. Mind if I get that back? I'll see 
what I can do, even if I have money problems. Even I have money problems. Eh? Whenever money seems something shiny, see, it's something shiny, he takes it back home. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, I guess I'll just have to find out where money disappeared to. I think that's your best bet. You should probably ask Uncle Mo. He might know. Huh? You don't know? Well, money isn't exactly someone I am on friendly terms with. What? He's not really the kind of animal I work with. Even if he does need taming. Oh, I see. Go to Mo's. Hmm. I guess it is time that I revisit that kooky clown. No, please, I beg. Do you mind telling us a bit about Ben? Ben? You mean the guy that is always hanging around with Trillo? What do you mean hanging around? Well, he was there when Trillo told me that he was in love with me. Trillo told you that he was in love with you? Yes, he did. Kind of cute, don't you think? He's so smart and he's such a wonderful singer. I love him. Ma'am. <laughs> he's a puppet. <laughs> she watched Pinocchio once as a child and she's like, oh, It's a real boy. <laughs> but what about Ben? What about Ben? He's got nothing to do with me loving Trillo. Like sand through the hourglass, so are the days of the circus. Regina, you were proposed to, weren't you? Proposed to? No, that won't be for a while. Huh? Really? That's strange, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, Max and Trillo both said otherwise. They said they asked for her hand in marriage. Huh, but Max only talked to the ringmaster. Oops. Max only talked to the ringmaster about it. Forgot about that. He asked the ringmaster for our hand, not Regina directly. So I guess Trillo hasn't asked her directly yet. What? He's going to propose to me? I'm so confused. How about you, Maya? Uh, what? Who do you think I should go for? Max or Trillo? How about someone your own age, maybe? Just a suggestion, though, like... Wait, wait. You do realize that Trillo is... a puppet. Huh? I don't care that he's a bit stiff. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I guess let's find Mo. No, I don't want to. Huh, Detective Gumshoe took off already. Yeah, probably because we ditched him earlier. I bet he and the other cops got lonely and headed back to the precincts. Oh my, Thrissim is right all the time. Ugh. It's all right to be wrong every now and again, right? See, Nick, it just took a while for the joke to find its audience. <sighs> so what can I do for you? Did you remember a good joke you wanted to tell me? Pull up a chair or maybe just pull my finger and let me have it. We're going to get the same sound effect either way, aren't we? How would you know I put a whip cushion on the chair? You really know what it takes to be a clown, don't you? God, the chat for this episode is just curse all over. I don't like it. So, about Regina. Regina is such a pure, innocent child. She's such a cutie, too. She was born and raised in the circus, you know. But that means she doesn't really know much about the world outside the big top. Sounds like Pearly. For her, every child's dream of the circus is her everyday reality. Oh, you better imagine it. She lives in she lives in a dream world. She's 
She's dancing wild animals, men flying in the air, and one very funny clown every day. The funny thing is that all that all that all that all seems normal to her because it is her everyday life. I guess it explains why she thinks she can marry a ventriloquist's puppet. Don't ask me if her reality is a good or bad thing though. A clown sees life simply without complications. Okay, cool. Tell me about money. Have you ever heard of a monkey named Money? Ah, yes, Money! He stole my attorney's badge. Well, Money does love shiny objects. It makes sense that he'd swipe your badge. But under no circumstances can you chase after him. Huh? What's... Why is that? Oh, I know. You don't want to get involved in any monkey business, right? Exactly! Bravo! Bravo! Enough joking around, though. Money isn't considered a member of Regina's family. Then who does he belong to? I'll be happy to take you to where his owner is staying. You mean right now? Of course! Shall we go? Hmm, should we go with him now? Yeah, go with him. <sighs> this is it. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? I can really don't be such a wimp. You only had to climb two flights of stairs. Huh? Huh? I know I I ride my bike like every single day, but those two flights of stairs that was way too much for me. Oh. Anyways, this is the place. Acro's room. Acro? He's an acrobat. It seems like he's not around today. Eh? That's a big pile of junk over in the corner. I don't think it'd be wrong to assume that Phoenix's stuff is over there too. Just be careful to make sure you've got the right stuff. Thanks, Mo. See you later. Holy cow! There's a fork and a mirror. Everything's shiny. There's even a really cheap looking knockoff wristwatch. Look at this, it's a trophy, and it's really heavy. Nick, I found it! Your badge, it's right here! Thanks, you really saved me. Huh? What's the matter? Did you find something? Yeah, check this out. It's a ring. There's something engraved on it. From T to R. Shouldn't Regina be in a shiny pile too? I don't think the monkey can carry her. <laughs> well, I think it's about time we wrap up our investigation. Do you think we'll win in court tomorrow? Who knows? Even I can't imagine what kind of testimony will come out tomorrow. I'm guessing Mo will be a witness in court tomorrow. Mo and maybe the puppets. Don't worry, Nick. No matter what, we still got a magician on our side. That's good because we might need some magic tomorrow. Okay, I'm just gonna see like how if I'm still like still on schedule or what. Do, 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 do. Where is it? There it is. All right, the first one. 42 minutes? Yeah, I don't fucking think so. <laughs> is it just me or is like the sound kind of like delayed? <laughs> and I'm like, click. And then it like reacts. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal to me, but like slightly annoying, I guess. Good morning, Max. Max? M milk. What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. S stage? Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess. Nick, Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. What? 
You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. Max is a bi icon. <laughs> He almost has the colors, too. Some get the man is the milk. Someone, oh yeah. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try, f why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now, the dashing young lawyer, flying fabulously in, f in from above. One glimpse of that, and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really, no one needs to fly today. Nick, what's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. Dashing young lawyer, flying fabulously. Oh, disaster bi? Oh, for sure. He almost has, like, the, the bi collars, too, of the bi flag. Not quite, but, like, almost, you know. And now the case of one... What? Your Honor, get on with it. Oh, sorry, I just realized that the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. So, well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, Your Honor, he does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. It sounds more friendly. Hmm. I wonder if that is to our advantage. Miss Von Karma, your opening statement, if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. It did not count. Do you hear me? She must still be upset about what happened last time. <laughs> this is Billy Bob John's ratio. <laughs> you have no chance. Zero silch nada. I'm not losing this case. Why you ask? Because it's not in the nature of a fun karma to lose at anything. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix writes. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. Me? Guilty? What are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. But it's not like it'll bring her dad back. There. Opening statement complete. Now, let's hurry and wrap up this waste of time. Very well. You may now call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective Dick Gumshoe, get up here. Get up there. Now. Sorry to keep you home from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. Don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. At your service, sir. All right, detective, you may proceed with your testimony. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. All of the circus performances, performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15 p.m. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped the vertebrae in his neck. I see. 
He was beaten to death. Here is the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts this into evidence. A blunt object. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Alright. Someone's falling, only circus performers. I'm gonna press everything just to be sure, because why not? Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground. The snow froze in place and stood on the ground until the next day. Hmm, and the snow. Let me see. There's gotta be more to this. Let me take a look at the photo. Okay. What's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Circus performers, performers I mean. When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and staff were there. Regina, the animal tamer, Mo the clown, Ben the ventriloquist, and of course the defendant, Maximilian Galactica, and, and his victim, the ringmaster. Well, I almost forgot, Regent the tiger was there as well. But if you're cu uh, out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? When I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Gina was played with Regent while Mo went back to his room, tired from work. Then the ventriloquist went to the front gate absorbed in his own world. The ringmaster and Max went off to the ringmaster's room to talk privately. Talk privately? Huh, that's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, would you? Seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 10.15pm. Um, okay. Not a problem, pal. We've got a witness that told us the whole, how the whole thing went down. Ow! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Hmm. Alright, I'll just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? <sighs> yes. A wooden box? That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box? Huh. It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? The victim was hunched over this 20 pound box. How much is 20 pounds? <laughs> this may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Contents. Do you mind telling us what was inside the box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. We took it back to the station and cracked it open. Don't ask me, I don't fucking know. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? What is that, detective? Exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? There was only one little bottle in that huge box? I wonder if that has some sort of special meaning. <laughs> it 
Yeah, Fleur, I think you were a bit off with 500 grams. <laughs> No, wait. Is, uh... Do you mean that for one pound? Or do you mean that for... Oh, okay. Never mind. I know masks. <laughs> <laughs> According to the autopsy reports, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? Done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. Theory is that it is something the perpetrator ran off with. And we think so, especially since you didn't fi find it on the scene. No, 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 I bet he made it disappear with magic. Ho, ho, ho. Well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we were, we're gonna get out of Gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're gonna get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Yeah, I'm not even off the stand yet. Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. She must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. I wonder if Trilla will show up on the stand as well. Please state your name and occupation for the record. What was the name I gave him again? <laughs> what was the name? What was the, what was the voice I gave him again? My full name is Trillo Quist. I am employed as an operatic tenor. E excuse me. The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman. Ventriloquist. That rope must be kidding, cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you with a song. Ahem. Me, 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 me. The world of the law, exciting and daring. Guilty, guilt or innocence decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? It had a good rhythm. Where? <laughs> it's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. Trillo, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly, I want to punch you in the face on, a f on the off chance swelling would help. I just realized I forgot to record again. It's fine. I can just upload it from Twitch. I found that last night. I was like, yes! I don't have to struggle with downloading because I don't have any space on my... Oh, my, oh I have space on my hard drive, but I don't have like space on my computer, I guess. You know that your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order! Order! I demand to know who the witness is! Don't... don't worry about me, sir. Let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about getting my... Ouch! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now, let's proceed. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. That's when I saw Max, heading toward the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Someone get Irene Adler out of court? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading toward the sea? You're sure of that? Without a doubt, he had on a silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with a crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? That's enough! I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? 
Hmm, he's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why's that? He has absolute proof. Ah, uh, still cat? This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Without question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecu prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. <clears throat> Thank you for stating the obvious. Is the Phoenix right? What do you have to say? Uh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stewards. I mean, clown. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh. You saw Max, and only Max, right, Trillo? That's right, and that makes him the killer. There was only one person headed that way that night. Hmm, that makes quite a bit of sense and makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? Wait a second. There's no proof that the witness saw Maximilian Galactica. Hey, hey, you still don't get it, do you? I saw what I saw. It was Max's three-piece joke of a costume. All right, let's say it all together now. Silk cat, cloak, white roses. Thank you. I think you should study up on your celebrities, Mr. Wright. Hey, I'm getting shut down by a toy. It's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? Oh, of course, dumbass. What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose this witness could have seen? That's the victim. That's correct. If Trilla was at the entrance to the plaza, you should have seen the ringmaster as well. Aha! Uh -huh. Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness. Before. Before. The witness could have seen him. Oh, before the witness could have seen him. God, I'd struggled with that sentence. Anyone with sense could have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he, just as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? Ugh. I see. It seems that at this stage I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. He's right. Brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now, let's move along with the testimony. Hmm. Trilla wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina. Which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah. I think so. I don't know anymore. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? Of course I'm sure. How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? 
Snobby 3, please get up. Get the wax out of your ears, lawyers nowadays. You're like talking to a brick wall. Maxis 3, please get up. Jeez, could you be any more dense altogether now? Silk cat, cloak, white roses. Thank you. Nick, I think you should put a little bit more effort into preparing your questions. Nah. Let me reconnect my controller or something. Phoenix is the definition of fuck around and found out. Yeah, Phoenix just rolls out of bed and just heads to court. Has no idea what's going on. And then it wins anyways. God, that reminds me of another video I saw. I can show it to you later. So funny. Mm. Let me try and press the rest, I guess. The clown, you're talking about Mo? Of course, I'm talking about that old fart. He's so pathetic, I can't stand him. Just a little bit of exercise and his makeup is running all over the place. Once practice was over, he was nine-tenths of the way to me killing over for good. Poor guy. We didn't have any choice, so Ben took him back to his room. When it comes to being a first place loser, that guy is ahead of the pack. Hmm. And what happened? <laughs> I like how they are just like the same voice. <laughs> Why the plaza's entrance? To do some thinking, of course. It was awfully cold out that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking in your nice warm lodging house have been a better idea? Mr. Phoenix Wright, I think you should leave the thinking to the witness. But I'm a good thunker, at least my teachers always said I was. Okay, yeah, but like, at least one of your teachers, uh accused you of being a thief, so, you know. Around what time did the police ar arrive at the scene? Hmm, I suppose that would have been around. Hey, what time was it? Huh, um, I think it was around, I'd say a bit after 10.30 p.m., I think. Practice ended at 10 p.m., so you hung around the lodging house th the entire time? I... I... I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big-nosed dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you just... Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in the weather? In that weather. Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. What? Who said we were waiting for someone? Mr. Felix Wright, we can all do without your off-handed theories. But this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm on to something. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Who do you suppose the witness was waiting for out in the, out in the cold that night? Regina. Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Is this true? Well, I am... Um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw. Don't you forget it. Well, 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 the puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Eh? Alright. There is obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. That night. 
He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. That makes perfect sense. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that he could have missed someone else other than Max Galactica. There is absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Um, um, I guess you got me. All right, all right, I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true, I was waiting for Regina. Pain! Don't volunteer things. Mr. Quist, tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance of, to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? What's the matter? You think that humans have a monopoly on marriage? That. The matter of puppet marriage is, marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge. I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More pain. Hmm. Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. You were going to propose? You, a puppet. Don't be so obtuse just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her too. No, judge, judge, no, 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 judge, judge, please, please. <laughs> this case is breaking me. <laughs> I'm two hours in and I'm almost at the breaking point already. God, awful. Exactly. His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now. Okay, Mr. Wright, please continue with your cross-examination. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't think they mean it like technically in a creepy way. They just like, ha ha, funny, but like, it aged like milk. I wanted to say they could at least have made her like 17, but like that was stupid bad. So. <laughs> what was with that sigh at the end? Oh, wait, hold on. I mean, humorizing a subject like that would be creepy as well. Yeah, it is. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't want to be like, oh, it's because it's from Japan, but like... Because, like, there's this whole, like, thing, like, oh, but, like, in, uh, the age of consent in Japan is, like, 14, but, like, that's true, but it's also bullshit. Because, like, each prefecture or, like, pretty much, like, each place has their own age of consent. And it's usually at 18. There are, like, a few places in Japan that actually has, um the age of consent at like 13 or 14 
But the thing is that those places are like only populated by older people and are like really small places. So. But yeah, just just some information because I know that that gets like thrown around a lot and people are just like really misunderstanding it. <laughs> so are you still thinking of trying to give it to Regina? Of course I am. I spent three months salary on this thing. I'm not gonna give it up that easily. Hmm, I wonder how much he receives for appearing in the circus. Probably way more than he deserves. How about it, Nick? I think it's about time to unwrap this toy's testimony. That's the spirit, Nick. Give him heck. The age of consent in Sweden is 15. In Norway, it's 16. But like, that's also a thing. People are kind of like misunderstanding what age of consent actually means. Because it is to protect minors. That's why it's there. <laughs> it's so that minors can like safely have sex with other minors it's not so that adults can have sex with minors that's not what it's for but people just don't get it they're like mm, age of consent mm -hmm. anyways that was like way too serious for the stream i'm sorry <laughs> the judge has that dazed and confused look again maybe he should get out more do i have to show the ring not contradict what he just said i still have it in my pocket then why do i have it here bitch tell me why do i have your why do i have your fucking ring right here bitch why do i have it here huh huh you see this you see this 2r from t or whatever the hell I mean, it's from T to R. Who else can it be? M, M, B, D, F, R, R, M. And then we have the puppet, T. Well, obviously, it's from the puppet to... to the ringmaster, obviously. Whatever, just penalize me, I don't care. Yeah, okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> what was it exactly that you planned on giving her? You know exactly what I was going to give her, numbskull. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question. What was it? You're gonna die when you hear this. It's an... Engagement ring. Engagement ring? Wow, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. Pain equals bad. <laughs> Push on anyway. It may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a puppet has ever proposed to a human. <laughs> I advise you to cut this t argument short. I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement ring. I'd like to stick to facts, not sociology. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in the black bathrobe. An engagement ring? Aha, uh -huh, it's actually a diamond-shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina is going to love it. It's just a ring. What's the matter, Nick? Well, there's gotta be something I can catch him on.
Do I now? Yes! Trillo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about? Uh-oh, looks like they're going to double team me now. What is this, Pokemon? Do you recognize this ring? Ah, that's... that's... that's mine! Give it back! Thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said, in the end, I wasn't able to give it to her. So I've still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? What's going on here? That's... that's... Ben, say something! Uh, don't put me on the spot like that, Trillo. I found this in Money's room. M Money's room? You mean a room they put money? Like a bank vault? Ha! That filthy monkey is gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent... F fiats? In my court. Well, your honor, money really is a monkey, in every sense of the word. Ah, I see! Well then... Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Shiny... things? Trillo! When was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was... That time, you know, that night, the night of the crime. What did you just say? Details. I need more details. Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might um, be able to say that. The ring might have... Well, it could have been taken around that time. What's with you? Oh, whatever, whatever. <gasps> whatever, okay, cool. Whatever. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has to do with that. With what? Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing. Not I, Miss Trillo Quist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring-snatching monkey money. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this slow, loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point? What point could that possibly be? Ben doesn't exercise enough. <laughs> That's a flaw. There's a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. A contradiction? The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after money, the monkey. When the witness was off chasing money, there was no one watching the plaza. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory. Which leads to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the, def than the defendant was at the scene. Interesting, Mr. Wright. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying, he is blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get that dork face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw him, no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. 
Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw that on that night. Ha! I told you so many times you'd think you'd know my story's not changing. You already changed your story, stick boy. And I'm sure it will change some more. Where there is one life, there is usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah! Hold on. I was gonna... What was I gonna look up? Oh, I was gonna look up, like, how many chapters this has. Oh. Oh, thank God! It doesn't look like it's a long one. Oh my God, there are only, like, one, two, three, four more chapters after this. So... I can get through this perfectly fine. I'll give you that I was waiting that night for Regina. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. He showed up after I had been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactic at the scene. There is no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Hmm. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max. That's right. Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. Then money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him? How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about... I suppose five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five-minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. <sighs> That's strange. So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. What, Ben? You have something? You got something to add? Let me guess. That's not it, Trillo. You say good evening at night. I'm sorry, Trillo. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you kept your your ventriloquist act outside of the room of the courtroom. Impossible. A performer lives and breathes his performances. You should know better. There's gotta be something wrong with this bit of testimony. Isn't that a bit strange to you? What do you mean? Well, if you hate Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? Oh, that's right. I was like... Why didn't he, like, say it back? <laughs> it strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strange you as strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand. Ow, that hurt. Maybe you should think of... Maybe you should think of having some proof before your lips start flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. There's no reason that Trilla would ever say something nice to Max. But how do I go about proving that with the evidence? Bluffing is everything in this world, but I'm sure you already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. You are 100% absolutely sure of what you said. What you just said. I told you already. Jeez, I am 100% absolutely sure. There's no way that he could be any more confident than that, right? Those three ridiculous symbols, huh? Out of curiosity, exactly how many times have you asked that question by now? Like, three? Maybe four? If you're gonna ask again... I'll answer with a chorus. Everyone together now. Silk cat, cloak, white roses. Thank you very much. Maya, you didn't have to join in, did you? But it's fun shouting up with everyone else. There has to be a hole in this testimony somewhere. I agree, but do we have the proof to make something stick? <laughs> we can do is try, right, Nick? You've gotta have something that will prove useful. All right, time to go to work. Okay. 
Okay, let's continue with this. Hmm. What's this, actually? I hate to say it, but Ben's part of your little act is coming off a bit stale. I'm sure that if a pro was to review your work... <laughs> You're not trying to pass yourself off as a professional performer, are you? Don't get so wrapped up in yourself, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You should know better! Ow! 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 That hurts! I should have set him straight. Bit your fucking wish. <laughs> you may proceed with your testimony witness. Petty to badmouth someone's performances. I think so too. I guess you really are right all the time. Glad to see you finally coming around to that. Though that was that was his pun. Oh my god. Continue with the cross examination, please. Okay. Hmm. this? It is. Cool. Trillo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just an argument. A disagreement, at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? What? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Ouch! Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There was absolutely no way they would have suddenly become cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on stand. There is no way a puppet, this lewd, would just up and say good evening to his rival. Are you saying this witness is lying? That he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I... I didn't tell a single lie. Honestly, I just... That's enough from you, Mr. Quist. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? It's my belief that the witness did indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? <laughs> the correct one. <coughs> <laughs> Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. What? If you had truly met Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Bless you. Thank you. Which means there is only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trillo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Ah, What in the world? You... Will the defense kindly explain who it was Trillo was Trillo saw that evening then? Considering the ill temper of this witness, there was only one person he would greet. It must be Regina. It's Regina, right? She's so cute. Judge, please, please. No. Bad judge. Bad. <laughs> No, Your Honor, it is not Regina. 
If it was Regina, Trilla would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah! I suppose you got a point there. It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct, it was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trillo, isn't that correct? Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Order! Order! How do you respond to this? Wait a second. Well, at first I didn't... Well, at first I thought it was an old man. But but once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. I think it is high time that we clear the air about this question. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. Was it Max Maximilian Galactica, or was it the ringmaster, one Mr. Russell Berry? The persecution argues that it was a defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly started, stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols? <laughs> Please, no, not again. Alright, this is getting old. Come on, man. You've got to remember them. Remember them by now. Here we go again, everyone. All together now. Yes, yes, we know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. A silk hat and, silk hat and a cloak. Anyone could wear them. They'd even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witness was endlessly, has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was Maximilian Galactica? Like, even I could put them on? <laughs> yeah. Like, literally anyone could. Like... They're just dumb, I guess. It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Miss Von Karma. Do you have a clear evidence? Do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was a defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it is impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. I appreciate Francisca's attitude towards the circus people. 100% done with their shit. I think everyone just hates them, except for Maya. Maya loves them and I'm just like, Maya, please, don't enable them. Yes. I think we finally won a point in this one. That is very unfortunate. Huh? You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix, right? What do you mean by that? You merely established one thing from this witness. You established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but... But... Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer to that question and evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responses f responsible for this crime. Very well. The court will take a 10 minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare their next witness. Court is now in recess. Yes, sweet. How long was that? Don't know. It probably was about 30 minutes. And she's done with every single person. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Also, I noticed something uh, because I was like going through uh, and uh, marking all of the chapters on uh, YouTube last night. And I noticed that between like every, like almost every single chapter, I was like, 
or like I made like some noise like between like I just kind of like breathed out <laughs> and it was kind of funny I was like oh my god every single time <laughs> I, I believe no I breathed in that's what I did I inhaled <laughs> like okay <laughs> Every single time and I was like losing it losing it at myself. That was so funny. I don't know. I guess it's just what it is when you're sleep deprived. Okay Sweetie, you have to believe me. I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene So then where were you when the murder took place? We talked about it yesterday. Remember I was in the ringmaster's room And while you were and while you were there, it was the ringmaster who left the room, right? Exactly, he told me to wait in the room because he would be right back. That's when the ringmaster headed to the scene of the crime, right? That's what it seems like. But the ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Oh, sweetie, I just remembered. I went straight to the ringmaster's room, still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means means that the ringmaster could have taken his costume and went out looking like Max. Fabulous! That's a fabulously possible possibility! <laughs> well done, Nick! However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Hmm... If you think about it, all they found at the crime scene was my silk hat. What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double, hmm. Wow, Max, I never thought of that. You should be a detective or something. Well, I was never quite sure what to be when I grew up. Magician or president? You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. That's really cool. Fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well. I will now call my next witness. A pitiful clown with the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. Will Mr. Lawrence Curls please take the stand? Oh no, here we fucking go. Why did she just call him a pitiful clown? The witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. In West Philadelphia, born and raised. <laughs> oh God! Name and occupation. Will the witness please inform the court why he is speaking autobiograph autobiograph? Autobiographical gibberish. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in court. I've never been in a courtroom in my life. I wasn't quite sure what joke is best suited to this sort of occasion. What in the world are you talking about? You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. Since it's easy to see your occupation, please state your name for the rec for the court. Yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Mom, do I have to wear pants? The sign only says no shirts, no shoes, no service. I feel like you could sum up this entire case with this. This is all you need to know about this entire case. <laughs> Okay, okay, how about this? Have you met my pr proctologist, Dr. Seymour Butts? How was that one? <laughs> but a couple of clouds were. Oh no, he started and he continues to suck! Your name Lawrence Curls, professional funny man, funny man, also known as Mo the Clown. You witnessed the scene at around 10 15 pm, the, the day of the murder. Correct? You just missed in West Clownadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spend most of my days. This man should meet butts 
Oh no! Yes. What was it? What was the voice I gave him again? Yes, it is. It was kind of like that. Very well, Mr. Curls. Will you please testify to what you saw that evening? A rabbi, a priest, and a Rastafarian walked into. Ooh. Without the humor, please. Okay. Oh, poor Mo can't be no his normal stoogy self in court. Yeah, because he's in court. God, why are you so fucking sad? Like, you're in court. You're here to testify. You're not here to s tell jokes. I you know. I know I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. I haven't been able to make people laugh for 10 years. No matter what I say, all I get in return is a vacant stare and polite applause. Since no one ever laughs at my jokes, I've taken to laughing at them myself. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. Imagine my predicament. I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. But I keep trying. I even tried to come up with jokes just for today. But this atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. I decided to try making everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone, what do you think of me? How am I doing? Um, aren't we the ones supposed to be asking the questions here? Witness. Huh? We will listen to your call for help after the co court proceedings are over. Thus, please stick to the facts of this case. Really? You'll really hear me out? Well, I'll make sure that one of my staff will be a straight man later. Thank you, thank you, I can't wait! Poor Gumshoe. I like how he just immediately knows. Oh, it's Gumshoe. Poor Gumshoe. Now that that's settled, shall we begin once again with the testimony? Of course we can. I'll talk for as long as you want. The night of the murder, after practice was over, I went straight back to my room. You have no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. That's when I saw two silhouettes. They were a bit far away, though. It was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clogged the ringmaster over the head. That's very interesting. If this eyewitness account is to, believe, to be believed, I have enough to pass judgment right now. Of course you can. There is no way that this account can be criticized. However, the witness is a bit, how do you say, off kilter. Almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. That must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the defense's cross-examination. Yes, your honor. Nick, you gotta find some kind of contradiction in this testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright. Your honor? I'm afraid that if you push this witness too far, it would bring disaster upon the court. Oh no, no, not this. Thus I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in pointless saber rattling. I understand, your honor. If he causes this clown to stray from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one with the corny jokes. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna save here because I'm worried that he's just gonna fuck up the entire thing. I don't trust this fucking clown. Okay, let me ask about this. You'd, you'd say you clearly saw this? Even though you were a bio admission far away? That's right! There it is. That, that's the one. I have been thinking about it over and over since last night. But things didn't really make sense until I spoke with the prosec prosecutor, Miss Von Karma. But now I am 100% certain that it was Max and the ringmaster that I saw that night. Just think about it. How could it be wrong if Max is so... How could I be wrong if Max is always wearing his uppity symbols? Uppity symbols? 
Lawyers nowadays. Do you even have to go to school anymore to be one? All right, everyone knows what to do. All together now, say it with Uncle Mo. See what I mean? It's always like this. The crowd never wants to go along with me. I must really be utterly and completely worthless as a clown. Yowza! Enough foolishness. Get back on track. Will a witness please testify as to what he saw? And only what he saw. You say you saw the ringmaster get clonked over the head. Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. He really does enjoy the completely random nun. <laughs> Why do you just suddenly use words I never heard in my entire life? Sick. Quitter. Are you kidding me? There's not even a fucking... <laughs> okay. Google it is then. Because fucking dictionary didn't even have the word. <laughs> what? Uh, sick. Pronunciation. I don't. Oh, yeah. Sequitur. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> he really does enjoy the completely random non sequitur. What would you say the victim was struck with? You mean the weapon? I have no idea. A weapon wasn't found at the murder scene, right? That's not what I meant. You did say... You did say you did see everything, didn't you? Well, I... Um, yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no I didn't. I didn't see a weapon! Yeah, it is... Not necessarily translated, but it's localized. So... It's translated, but like some things are changed, like... Ramen being changed to burgers, you know, just American things. Mo, did you or did you not see the crime of the murder committed that night? Objection. I will not permit you to harass my witness in this manner. You better have an ex excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown. Because if you don't, you know what's waiting for you. A nice penalty. Oh boy, that's a, that's a penalty, all right. Isn't this a bit melodramatic? So what will it be then, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear basis to believe that my witness did not see the crime? Um, give me the map. Oh, see, right now I don't have a clear basis to be thinking that. Then this is just another one of your pointless efforts to badger my witness. 
Plus, you've just earned yourself a penalty. No! Now, wait a second, Miss Von Karma. Oh. This time, I do not feel the need to treat Mr. Wright so harshly. Thank fuck. That's right, what he said. Bailed out by the judge. What an honor indeed. If we must penalize Mr. Wright for, for his display, I think a verbal censure should would be best. Huh? You know the rules, Mr. Wright. There's no room for bases hounding in this courtroom. Well, okay, I can I can deal with a small one. I guess he didn't really bail me out after all. You know, most testimony and what he told us yesterday are kind of different. Yeah, I noticed. We've just got to pinpoint what's changed. You can do it, Nick. I don't remember what the hell he said. <laughs> oh, didn't he say he got woken up? You just happened to glance out the window? You could say that. You could also say I peeked, stared, glimpsed, peeped, <laughs> eyeballed. <coughs> Mr. Curls! Oh, I guess the not synonyms aren't allowed either. What should I do? I wonder if I should press him for further him further on this issue. Keep pressing. Exactly why did you look out of your window that night? Why? Why? Clowns don't get a reason to look out their windows, do they? That's not what I meant. I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday. Once I had tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant boomp. Oh, that's right, I did say the boomp. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You forgot? Your Honor, the witness looked out of his window upon hearing a loud sound. He did not just simply glance out of his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? It's not something you just forget to mention. Um, yeah, what she said. I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Curls, please revise your testimony. This should start turning the tables in our favor. I heard a huge noise, noise outside the window and that's what, ma what made me take a look outside. What was the sound like? Well, I guess it kind of sounded like, hmm, I guess I could say... Mr. Curls, may the court remind you that humor is unnecessary. So, oh, how'd you know that I was gonna make a joke? I guess that just sound sounded like a... I suppose it sounded like someone getting hit with something very hard. Yep, that's what it sounded like, honestly. Someone getting hit, huh? What then? You went to look out the window and you saw... Far away, you say. If you had to say exactly, how far away were they? Let me think about that for a second. If my room is here, and they looked about yay big, I'd say they were about 30 feet from my window. Just 30 feet? That's not far at all. It was snowing that night and it cut down on visibility. I see. Please continue with your testimony regarding the two shadows you saw. saw the ringmaster get clunked over the head. So it did. Oh, this is, uh... Objection! I really went for the same one again, like a fucking dumbass, didn't I? It's fine, I just, uh... Let's try it. Of course I do. I've got a great reason to make my claim. And I suppose you will be telling us all of that great reason? Of course I will! The reason is, the witness's very own testimony. What is the meaning of that, Mr. Wright? Mo said that he heard a sound like a thump of someone getting hit. Oh yeah, and then he said that he like... Oh yeah, okay. Hmm, he did say that. However, Mo just stated the following under oath. 
watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clunked the ringmaster over the head. Yes, exactly. It's always to be believed when he says he looked out the window upon hearing a sound. There is no way that he could have seen Max clunk anyone. Oh god. Mr. Curls, how do you respond to Mr. Wright's assessment? They didn't com commit these clowns promptly escaped from a maximum security clown car. Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C-Team theme to anger this court? No, no, no. I'm just stalling for time while I jog my memory. Great job, Nick. These types of witnesses always seem to have a selective memory. You just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Well, um... Ah, you're back from your jog? Well, it pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much? When I looked up my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped me fill in the gaps of my statement. Von, von Karma. Oh, wait, was this, uh... Mm. Tampering with witnesses again. So now you are saying that you did not see the defendant clonk the ringmaster. Yes. When I looked up my window, <clears throat> when I looked up my window, the ringmaster had already checked out. Checked out? Yep. He was on permanent vacation, as they say. Mr. Curls, Your Honor. You did not witness the actual crime. However, you still say you saw the criminal, correct? Yes, exactly. The ringmaster was slumped over and I saw someone's silhouette next to him. Very well. And please testify to the silhouette you saw. I expect the truth. And if I even catch a hint of a joke from you, I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Etiquette. Got it? Got it. Like the stomach, so like, yeah, pretty much. It was a bit far away, but that shadow could only have belonged to Max. There's no doubting it, especially since I saw his uppity symbols. His silk hat, that black cloak. They were all there. His face was silhouetted, but there was no doubt that it was him. His cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. Hmm, it does seem as if the defendant was at the scene of the crime. But the cl it took the clown- <laughs> I get confused by the voices. It took the clown long enough to get his facts straight. But whatever, this should finally be good enough, yes? It is decisive, just testimony. Was Max really at the crime scene that night? He said he wasn't there. You have to believe in that. All right, Mr. Wright, commence your cross-examination. I cannot sit in a chair. <laughs> hmm. You're sure that is what you saw that night? Exactly what I said I... S exactly what I said I saw is exactly what I saw. Got ice like a hawk. Hmm. Don't birds have terrible night vision. But that's not all I saw. I have a memory of exactly this part. I feel like I've gotten stuck here some <laughs> before. So yeah. You say you saw all of Max's uppity symbols. I suppose so. The silk cat and the cloak, right? Mo. Everyone knows that Maximilian Galactica has three uppity symbols. Three symbols? Yay! Everyone get ready! All together now! Silk hat, cloak, white roses! What? Who cares if he knew that there were three or not? He saw what he saw, and he saw the symbols. He just forgot to mention one. Isn't that right, Mo? Silence, fool. 
You have to respond with the whole truth, no fractions. Order! Order! Mo, you didn't see the roses, did you? To be honest, there weren't any roses on the person I saw. The crime scene was dark. It's obvious it was too dark to see that kind of detail. But the witness said he was able to see the silhouette of the criminal's face. Not to mention that the roses are white. There's no way he could have missed them. Then the roses must have fallen off when the defendant assaulted the victim. If that was the case, then the police would have found them near the crime scene. Mr. Wright, are these white roses truly material to the facts of this case? Clearly not. He's just toying with this court. Got him on the ropes now. These seemingly, these seemingly insignificant facts have never failed to lead me to the truth yet. Someone is toying with the court, but it's not me. Your Honor, do you recall Trillo's testimony? There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. How can you mistake someone with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Trillo saw them all. Trillo saw all three of Max's symbols. However, this witness claims there were no white roses on the person he saw. There is absolutely no doubt that this is a contradiction. Hmm. Now what am I supposed to think? One is supposed to disregard the pointless, but this... Judge, forget the roses. Think about his other testimony. The witness had stated without the doubt that he saw Maximilian Galactica. Nothing else matters. Let's wrap this case up now. Your Honor, it may be trivial, but it does cast doubt on the prosecution's case. Okay, I have my doubts about this witness. It seems that unlike mine, the witness has not grown, grown more mature with age. I'm not mature. I've come to a conclusion. I'm 99% certain that this witness saw the defendant. However, my remaining 1% of doubt is quite reasonable. Which means that for my peace of mind, I'm going to request a bit more testimony, please. What? If there are no contradictions in this next statement, I am prepared to issue a ruling. Ruling? Nick, this is your last chance. Dude needs therapy. <laughs> I think everyone, every single character in these games need ter ter therapy. There's no doubt in my mind there, there were no white roses that night. However, all of the other symbols were there. I'm equally sure of that. Especially the silk hat. There is no way I could forget seeing the decorations on it. He was wearing it the entire time he was on the scene. Mr. Wright, you've got one last chance at this. Just one chance? I will not allow even the slightest hint of badgering against this witness. If you are going to prove to me there is a contradiction with Mr. Curl's statement, you'd better have at least a shred of evidence to back up your accusations. I've only got a single shot at this. I've got, to be, I've got to be careful. I understand, Your Honor. One chance is all I will need. For sure, because I will save. <laughs> There are no roses here either, so... Mo, be honest. Oh, here we can go. I'm finished. Um, excuse me. I'm the one handing out the pen. Ow! Witness, continue with your testimony. Okay, so I actually have to present evidence. Uh.
That never happened. <laughs> hmm. What do you think, Nick? There's no way I'm going to lose after coming this far. There's gotta be an answer, and it's probably in the court record. Wait! Scared, all right. <laughs> yes, it's the hat, of course, because he was wearing it the entire time he wasn't seen. But like, still, the hat was on the crime scene. This wouldn't happen to be the silk hat you saw that night, would it? Yep, yeah, that's it. That's the hat he was wearing that night. No question in your mind. Exactly, how would one mistake a thing like that? I see. Is there some sort of problem, Mr. Wright? It's from Karma. Where exactly was the silk cat found? Must you always ask these questions? It was found at the crime scene. The, the crime scene? That means... The silk cat fell off at the crime scene. However, the witness clearly testified to the contrary. The witness stated that he was wearing it the entire time that he was on the scene. No, that's not true! Order! 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 Mr. Carroll's! Yes, your honor. What is the meaning of all of this? You're old enough to know better than to behave like this in court. Hey, that's just not right. That's so harsh. That's what's not right here is your eyesight and your memory, amongst other things. Why are you being so mean to me? What did I do? Let me guess, you just didn't like my jokes or something, right? You didn't have to go and insult my eyesight or my memory. They're both great. Seriously. Oh, God. I just cried. Cool. Enough of these childish outbursts, Mr. Curls. Who do you think you are? I saw him. I swear I saw him. It was Max. Even if he didn't have his roses, he was still wearing that his dumb silk hat. I'm telling the truth. He's turned into a bratty little kid. It's pitiful, isn't it? He left the scene wearing that dumb silk hat. He was there. He left the scene? What's the matter, Nick? There's something I've been mulling over for a while now. Mo? What do you want? You just said that he left the scene. Exactly, how did the murderer leave the scene of the crime? What? He, um, he went. What do you mean, how did he leave the scene? You can't ask me that. Mr. Phoenix Wright is badgering the witness, Your Honor. Objection. This witness's testimony is so full of holes, Miss Von Karma's protest is useless. Uh -huh. You've got the point. Let's hear what the witness has to say on this matter. Is that alright with you, little guy? Don't talk to me like I'm a little baby. Besides, what kind of stupid question is how did he leave the crime scene? The answer is obvious. He just turned around and walked away. That's what I expected you'd say. You sure that's how it happened? Say what? Huh? I'm not sure I know exactly where you're going with this. Lawyers nowadays sure do love to harp on the smallest things. Do you have any proof to counter his story as to how the criminal left the scene? Yes, the crime photo. <laughs> Look at this picture. No, they switched out photograph. The problem is the footprints in the snow. Footprints? In this photo, we can clearly see the footprints of the victim. However, where are the criminal's footprints? They aren't there.
So, Mo, exactly how did the criminal escape the scene? Um, he, uh... Your Honor, this witness has already proven that his testimony is completely unreliable. I move to strike all of this witness's testimony from the court record. I agree. This clown's testimony is as rickety as the clown's car at uh, the clown as the clown car he came to court in. Wait just a second. You guys can't just ignore everything I've said. Fine, fine, I'll tell you the truth this time. You wait a second. I think you've said more than enough for today. I didn't hurt. I'm sick and tired of listening to you anyways. I'll give you the real deal this time, I swear. I don't know why, but I get the feeling things are gonna get worse before they get better. Mr. Lawrence Curls. Yes? The testimony you've provided up until now has been false? It hasn't been false, I haven't lied, it's just... Oh, no worries. Go lurk mode if you want to. It's just what? It's just, I was a bit confused on the on the bit about the criminal leaving the scene. Especially since Von Karma and her whip told me not to talk about what I really saw. Yeah, good luck with the paper, by the way. Order! Order! I will have order! Francesca Von Karma, how could you? Your Honor, if you had heard the truth from this witness, you would have ex you would have exactly the same opinion as I have. What opinion is that? It's not funny. That's enough out of That's enough out of you. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. Now then, let's hear the truth about what you say you saw, Mr. Curls. Ha! You're not gonna believe this, but it's all true, I tell you. Try not to waste our time with your idiotic drivel. Now it's time for our next segment, Monos! Everything I've said up until now has been the truth. When I looked out the window, the ringmaster was down and Max was standing above him. He wasn't wearing his white roses, but he was wearing the silk hat. That's when I saw... He... This is the truth now. Get ready for it. He flew! He jumped up and flew through the air. He flew right off and disappeared into the darkness. That's why there were no footprints. Flying people don't leave footprints. I told you it wasn't funny. Do you believe me now? Well, that was... Um, how do you put this into words? Maximilian Galactica is a world-class ma magician. How to, but to leave the scene of a crime by flying, there's no way that actually happened. You... you right. Why is she right? You believe the other witnesses? Why would you believe me? Especially since it's the best part of the story. Hmm... To be honest, this is the first time I've heard of a flying criminal. What do you think about this witness's testimony, Mr. Wright? This is a dream, right? <laughs> what he just said was so strange, I don't think he would have made it up. Which means that he is telling the truth? That's what I think. Nick, wait. That means what, that Max actually used mag magic. Yikes, you're right. Ow! Only a foolish looking fool could be fooled by such a foolish fool's foolish dream. Ooh! <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Magic does not exist. I suppose I will let you all in on my thinking regarding this matter. The criminal disappeared into the sky. I'd love to believe that. But I just can't wrap my head around how that could actually happen. You imbecile. If you disregard, as if, if, you, if you disregard a need for proof, Miss Von Carver's case is sound. However, I've got the feeling that this case is in dire need of more investigation. Thus I will conclude today's proceedings at this point. It's an undisputed fact that the criminal left no footprints at the scene. Tomorrow, I want us to find out the reason behind this mystery of mysteries. Um, uh... Uh-huh. 
Uh -huh. I believe that's enough for today. Court is adjourned. Thank fuck that's over. God. Hey, sweeties. What in the world is going on? That's what I want to know. They say the criminal flew off into the air and disappeared. Max, I can't believe I'm asking this, but you didn't fly that night, did you? I know you didn't mean to ask me such a fabulously stupid question. I can't fly whenever I please, it's not that easy. But it looks so effortless for you on stage. It's not that simple, I'm not actually flying on stage. I use invisible wires and have them hoist me through the air. Wow, you just told me the secret to your magic. No, I broke the first rule, the cardinal rule, the only rule. I'm sorry, Max. I made you break a magician's creed to never re re reveal the secret to their tricks. Nick, what do we do now? What we can do now is hope we find the flying criminal in court tomorrow. Maybe he so so carefully stepped on the victim step marks. Yeah, I don't think so. Then he would have had to like go backwards too and like you wouldn't have seen anything so... It looks really weird because it's only like his set of footsteps. And they only go one way. Great idea! Let's do our best and catch this sucker. Um, before I continue though, um, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick because, you know. So, no, the stream is not starting soon. The stream has already started, dumbass. Turn up the BRB and the, uh, and the this and the this off. And then we just do a little bit of, uh, this.
Okay. I'm back. I'm back. So, I also had to like place some um, place an order for uh, oops, wrong thing for groceries tomorrow, so I can pick them up tomorrow. Oops. So, yeah. Part three investigation. Let's go. Um, Nick? What is it? I've got a confession to make. I'm terrible at figuring out magic tricks. Magic tricks? Yep, magic tricks are by their very definition tricks, right? But I can never figure out the tricks when I see them. That's because the tricks are performed by pros. They do it so you can't guess the trick. But, but the trick Pearly showed me was incredible. Pearls did a magic trick? Hmm, what kind of trick was it? See, it looked like she pulled the end of her own thumb off. <laughs> First she put her right thumb next to her left hand, then it just disappeared. She could move it up and down and everything. It was incredible. Really? Was it kind of like this? What? How'd you do that? Nick, you're like a real magician. See, this is why I can't figure out magic. I'm no good at it. It's like... Whoop, 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 woo. <laughs> what you do is so much cooler than the magic tricks. That's true, too. I couldn't even do it properly. Whatever. An embarrassment. <laughs> Especially hard tricks like flying away from the scene of a murder. You'll take all the fun out of, a, of magic if you keep trying to figure it out. Okay, but that's true though. <laughs> that's true because I have this like... Um, I have this uh, magician that's in my YouTube recommendations sometimes. And uh, in like the short... In like the shorts part. And uh, I'm just like, okay, I know exactly what he does now. <laughs> it's obvious. So he, will, he was like doing like this, uh, this experiment of just like pick a number between 1 and 10. Uh, and then you... Was it? You multiply it by 2 and then something else. And I, just to like be smart, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go with two and seven. So I'm gonna do both of them at the same time. And it was like, at the at the end, uh, the last number uh, in that final number, the last digit in that number you get will be four. And that's like supposed to blow your mind or something. And I'm just like, joke's on you. I did it with two numbers. And I saw through it pretty quickly. Anyways, back to... No. That. Okay, cool. You hear that? It sounds like two people arguing. Alright, let's do it. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, oh, wait. Quit your whining. Just let's just give this a shot already. All right, let's go. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. What are you doing? Gently down the stream. Come on, you know that. I'm trying my best, but Trillo, this just isn't going to work. Do you enjoy saying dumb things? You're going to have to be on your own someday. If you can't handle something as simple as this, what are you going to do then? Hello, Ben. Hello to you too, Trillo. What are you doing here? Can't you see we're on a secret crash training course? I'm sorry. Secret crash training? 
Whoa. Yes, Trillo wouldn't give up until I said we'd try out his idea for a new routine. So we were trying to sing in a round for our new... Singing around for our new ventriloquism act. In a round? You can really do that? That's incredible. See, see, even they are surprised by the idea. I told you. You're not the only ones. You even surprised me with your idea. Once we've got a grip on the basics, then it's just a matter of practice. Y you think so? Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to give this back to you. Ah, there it is. Now that I've got this ring back, it's time to take one more shot at Regina. Um, I know that you already testified in court today. You want to talk about what we saw, right? Yes. Well, at first we thought it was the old man. Just looking at his walk and how he acted, right, Ben? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. But then we said hello and didn't even get a reply. Not to mention he was draped in those gaudy symbols. What would you have thought if he wasn't wearing those symbols? Hmm, huh. what do you think, Ben? What? Oh, um, I would have thought it was the ringmaster. Hmm, something just isn't adding up here. I wonder who they really saw. I was hoping I could ask you about Regina. I'm completely serious about her. That's why I'm waiting for her even now. Really? That's so sweet. But if you really wanted to see Regina... Shouldn't you check out the tent? Ha! Huh. You haven't got a clue about things, do you, sweetheart? Eh? Waiting like this is part of being in love. How so? I want to... There we go. Perfect. <laughs> if you had a clue, you would know that waiting is such sweet, wonderful torture. When your body aches for your partner's love. That's one of the best parts. Um, yeah, I knew that. Poor Maya. She's so red, she looks like a vine-ripe tomato. So, how is this new routine working out? Will you two just take a chill pill already? Our routines are secret. We are going to take the ventriloquism world by storm. It'll be a real revolution. That sounds incredible. But let me make one thing clear. We're not going to take on the world just because that jerk said we should. That jerk? Max Galactica. Performers should aim for the world. Who does he think he is? What's... what the fuck? <laughs> Trillo, you seem to be to really be fired up about all this. He needs to realize that he isn't the only one who can con conquer the world stage. You're right, you're right. Mark my words, I, Trillo Quist, will win the Grand Prix. You're the man now, doll. Row, row, row your boat. Will be the key to a glorious victory. Um, not to rain on your parade, but wouldn't a more mature song be best? Hey, you've got to start somewhere, right? Don't screw this up! You've got to be a part of this, too! Oh, it's you two. You look like you just got hit by a truck. Shouldn't you get some rest? Ah. <laughs> I see. <sighs> I'm taking a rest right now, pal. I've been listening to some crazy clown's life story. Miss Von Karma told me to come down here and do this for her. Yeah, I figured as much. Let me tell you something, pal. Listening to that old clown sucks all your energy. Every time he's done talking, he looks at you like you should be doing something. Um, I think he's waiting for you to laugh at his jokes. I know that, pal. Do you have any idea how much your face hurts if you fake laughing that much? Francisca really set you up bad this time, didn't she? 
I like how you're just like not saying anything about this. <laughs> about this round little boy. I want to place it on my microphone or something. <laughs> Why do I want to do that? I don't know. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> hey, I have ADHD. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> if you ask me, she should be listening to Mo herself. No way, pal. You're not gonna get me to backbite a woman with a whip. No way. Why are you defending her? Prosecutor von Karma's always got her eye on us. And every time you definitely don't want her to show up. Poof, there she is. Don't show up. 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 Looks like, she looks like she's wound him up pretty tight. She's directly above us as we speak. Huh? How is that possible? According to the clown, the culprit jumped from here and disappeared into the sky. If that's what happened, it means the killer passed right by this window, pal. Oh, I see. Whose name? Oh, his name! I don't know, I never really gave him a name. He's just like a squishy I got. Like a plush squishy. Squishy shishy. Who lives in that room behind the window up there? The acrobat's got his room up on the third floor, it seems. Pretty soon, Miss Von Karma's gonna start her investigation up there. So don't get any ideas of going up to the acrobat's room. Got it, pal? <sighs> Francisca Von Karma. Once well, she's done with her investigation, I think I'll go up there and check it out. Most not here. Thank God. If he was here, you would have been able to tell even before you stepped in, stepped into his room. I'm sure you would have heard him laughing away. Aha! 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 What do you think he is laughing at when he's all by himself? I always thought he was just think thinking up new jokes. Hmm, he must really love his work, though. To be fair, I do the same thing. Make myself laugh. It's embarrassing, really. So embarrassing. Huh? Where's Regina? I don't know. But if she's with that tiger, I don't want to find out. Let's hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> Nick, you're kind of a chicken, aren't you? No, 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 no. I'm just... Um, allergic to wild tigers. Max and the ringmaster had their talk in this room. What could have been in the ring? What that could have been when the ringmaster put on Max's costume and went outside. Why did he do that anyway? Was it really that cold or something? Okay, it's just the same. We still can't get that. Okay, I want that. <laughs> it's been tempting me all the time. All the time. I just want to take it. All right, welcome to the wonderful, the fabulous, the cafeteria. Yikes, he is in an, he is in an awfully good mood. All right, do you know what time it is? Riddle time. Why does everyone cry when they eat Mexican pizza? Um, come on, you can answer this. It's easy. Because cafeteria Mexican pizza is possibly a weapon of bowel destruction? Meh. Wrong. Try again. Okay. What do you think, girly? Um, I got it. Okay, what is your answer? Because they're in the cafeteria. Exactly! It's an incredibly sad place, that cafe. I did it! What's going on? He's being too nice. Today's been a really crazy day, hasn't it? 
You're telling me I didn't think it was going to be so tough. Tough? Yeah, it was a tough crowd. That's what you call a crowd that refuses to laugh. For instance, it was such a tough crowd this morning I had to smash watermelons. Hmm. I told them all a great story and even greater jokes, but no one busted out laughing. You even used the famed no shoes, no shirt, no service joke. Exactly! How could you not laugh at stunning comedy like that? Are you 100% sure you're about your testimony today? I saw what I saw, I swear. That creep just flew through the air? It wasn't exactly flying per se, it was more like floating. The silhouette of his face made me positive it was Max. I don't see a psyche lock, he must be telling the truth. Can we talk to Max? Oh, my sweeties! You mind hurrying up and getting me out of this place? We're doing our best, Max. Just hang in there. A little while ago, some people from the local TV station came by, and since I'm a famed magician, they said, let's make you your very own TV special. Really? What kind of TV special? Maximilian Galactica, the great prison escape. It would be aired live. Hey, that sounds like it would be an awesome special. But if I do the special before I'm acquitted, they'll never let me out of here for real. Well, it would surely be an unnecessary addition to your troubles with the law. That's what I was thinking, but the produ production staff is already working on the show. If you don't get me out quick, I'll have no choice, choice but to stage a real prison break. You seem awfully calm about that possibility. I'd have no choice. It would be a contractual obligation. That's show business. Um, the night of the crime. You didn't happen to fly off into the sky, did you? Here's how everything went down, sweetie. At the time of the murder, I was sitting in the ringmaster's room. Not to mention, flying off into the sky is not just something I can do at will. I don't care what the stoogy clown says. It wasn't me. Max, Max, do you mind teaching me the trick behind flying? Hmm, you'll have to forgive me, sweetie. The difference between me and cheap imitation magicians is that I keep my mouth shut. I don't teach people tricks, but I will say this much. It's much harder than you think. I was thinking about this in court today. I've got a favor to ask of you. Anything for you, sweetie? Be friends with the other performers in the circus. Fabulous! A great joke! Why would I be friends with a bunch of hacks like them? But... I've won on the world stage. i won the International Grand Prix. International Grand Prix? Performers should always look to perform on the world stage. But the performers at the circus are completely and utterly devoid of ambition. That is something that I can simply not tolerate. Ambition, huh? Something about what Max just said rings true to my ears. Tell me about this Grand Prix. Oh my! My sweeties want to hear all about the Grand Prix, don't they? To be honest though, I've told this story like 100 times already so it's a bit boring. We're sorry to make you tell it again. You must not have heard me, I am really sick of telling this story. But what can you do? I am Maximilian Galactica, I suppose I can tell it again. Voila! Here, take a look at this. I just happen to have a picture from the Grand Prix with me. Just look at that fabulous stage. That is the first stage that I ever flew on. I flew right over the audience. The crowd erupted into applause. At that time, I thought to myself that I could die right then and die a happy man. I'll never forget how I felt that night. The emotions. The acclaim. Wow. <clears throat> By the way, I think everyone who is a performer should get to experience that feeling. I just wish I could explain that to the other people in the circus. That's incredible, Max. I want a trophy too. Hey, Nick, how about you buy me a trophy? That's not how you earn a trophy, Maya. My sweeties, you can have this picture of my triumph. Just make sure you show it to all the other members of the circus. 
Look and learn. That's what you should tell them. Learn how to get thrown in jail. Alright, sure, I'll present it. Okay. They don't care. Ah, not this picture. He showed it to you guys too. Huh? You've seen it as well? Well, you know what they say about Maximilian Galactica. He really gets around. <laughs> oh yeah, he didn't just show me the picture. What do you mean? He showed me his bust too. Let me tell you, that thing is enormous. It's in the picture, I think. He'd make us worship it every day. He made us bow to his greatness. He's got a big bust. I wouldn't mind hearing more about Max's bust. Not that I'm into that sort of thing. Okay, Phoenix. Wait, no, sorry, sorry. I just... <clears throat> sorry, there is just like this, like, I believe it's like a Valentine's art. Like, it's official art. Um, where there are like several of the characters are making a chocolate bust of Phoenix. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Max's bust should be on that small table over there. There's nothing over there. Really? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Huh. When was it? I'd say about five days ago. All of a sudden, the bus disappeared. It disappeared? If you want to see it, there's a photo on the bulletin board over there. Max just had to put the picture up. Hmm. Hey, this thing is really cool. Nick, Nick, I want someone to make a bus of me. Sure, as long as I'm not paying for it. Huh? Is there anything else that's changed about this place? Nope, nothing's changed that I can see. I wonder if he's actually thinking about it, about this, or if he's setting up a bad joke. Nope, nope. I'm drawing a blank here. A quiet mo is a good mo in my book. I guess there really aren't any other things that have changed, huh? Well, there is this one teensy tiny thing that does seem different. Tell us. Tell us. Well, on the morning of the crime, over on that bulletin board, this piece of paper was posted front and center. Piece of paper? It's torn, so I don't know what it said, but I could see its title. Yikes. It says, to the murderer. M m murderer? Yep, that's what it says, but the rest of it has been ripped off. And I don't know who posted it. Um, when did you find this? The morning before the murder. Before the murder? Yes, the ringmaster was killed the night after this paper was discovered. Who in the world posted this thing? Nick, I think we'd better follow up on this important lead. Well, there's obviously no one here. I don't know why I went there. <laughs> Maybe the murderer wanted to keep it. Maybe.
Do you know anything about this note? The morning of the murder. It was posted on the wall in the cafeteria. I do know all about that note. When I read it, my heart certainly skipped a beat. Your heart skipped a beat? While I was enjoying my morning tea, the ringmaster and company entered the room. And company? I guess it wasn't really a company. It was just the ringmaster and my sweetie pie. When the ringmaster read the note, he turned an incredible bright red. All of a sudden, he tore it off the wall and shoved it into his po into the pocket of his tailcoat. Really? Out of curiosity, what in the world was written on that thing? Let's see. Uh-huh. I don't want to steal the fun from my sweeties. Go and find out on your own. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. You might also want to ask my sweetie pie princess. Now we can finally get that fucking piece of paper that I've been like drooling over this entire time. I'm just like, I want that piece of paper. Give me that piece of paper. Give me paper, paper. Hey, do you see that? There's a scrap of paper shoved into the pocket of the tailcoat. You know, I've got a feeling I know what that is. I bet that's the other half of the note that Mo gave us. Then let's hurry up and check this thing out, Nick. I knew it. It fits perfectly with the other piece. What does it say? What does it say? To the murderer, I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Meet me at 10 p.m. tonight at the lodging house plaza. Tonight at 10 p.m.? That's when the murder took place. Now we need to find out who called the ringmaster. What? Mo's gone. There's a message on the bulletin board. I'm hungry, so I'm off to get some hamburgers. Love, Mo. Mmm, hamburger. Just thinking about it is making me hungry. All of a sudden, I need a burger bad. All of a sudden, I need a new partner bad. Oh, Gumshoe. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. I'm sure you did a good job as usual. Well, I'm done with the investigation of the acrobat. Finally. But Miss Von Karma... Nick, what is that? That beeping sound. Hmm. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? Every time I hear that sound, she's uh, he's, she's usually not very far behind. Some sort of pager or something. If you don't mind, pal, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here, quick. See ya, pal. I didn't know that Gumshoe could run that fast. So much for being a flatfoot. Never seen a grown man so afraid of a girl still in her teens. Well, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. The wind is biting his- Ow! Is biting his lashes from a whip. Von, von, von Karma. She really did appear. It was a real battle today in court, wasn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Did you have to jump out and scare us like that? What can I do for you? Tomorrow will be the day, the day my dream finally comes true. You mean the story of my defeat at your hands making the national news? Ha <laughs> ha National news? You possess such a small sense of scale. The global news, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Your miserable plight sh will be known internationally. I think she might be overestimating the importance of a wind by just a smidge. Miss Von Karma, it appears you got your hands onto something big, huh? Huh, I'm amazed you picked up on that much. Anyone could. You couldn't hide that look of victory with a, with a, with ten paper bags on your head. I've got conclusive evidence and a conclusive witness. Need any more hints? A conclusive witness? You must mean the acrobat, right? I'm putting in the summons for him to be called as a witness as we, as we speak. 
It's the final nail in your coffin, Mr. Phoenix, right? Yeah, 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 I get it already. You want to beat and destroy me. I can't worry about her. I gotta try and find out more information myself. Why do you keep giving Nick the evil eye? It doesn't matter if you prove the defendant guilty tomorrow. Nothing will be able to bring your dad back. My... Dad? You must mean the esteemed Manfred von Karma. Of course, your dad. I know you miss him. Enough out of you. One more word and you'll get a mouth mouthful of whip. Now, when did I ever bring up my papa's name in this or any other conversation? Then... Then what's this revenge thing you're talking about? You wouldn't understand, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I have to see him again one more time. Him? I'm sure you I'm sure you know who to whom I refer. Miles Edgeworth. What? Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth? M Miles e Edgeworth. M Miles Edgeworth. Why would you even bring him up? You haven't forgotten, have you? Do you know who it was that trained the gifted prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth? Manfred von Karma. Exactly right. It was my papa. That means that Edgeworth was... Right again. Miles was like a little brother to me. Huh? Little brother? But Edgeworth and Nick are the same age. Edgeworth. Oh boy, here go the gay flashbacks. The man who inspired me to become an attorney. Sorry, I can't say this with a straight face. <laughs> I fought against him in a few cases. But a little after that case was over. He vanished. It's your fault he is gone. Huh? It's the truth, isn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I... I... Nick, what does she mean? Why do you read stuff all the time? Edgeworth was never quite the same after that case, and then with the case after that one. He never set foot in the court again. And then one day, he just vanished. All he left was a simple note at the prosecutor's office. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses that- No, it, it is in the game! It is mentioned in the game! I literally read that it- Someone said that it wasn't mentioned in the game. It was mentioned in the game. That was one year ago. It was a few months after you left to go back home. Mr. Edgeworth, he's dead? I don't believe it. He's still alive. I'm sure of it. Somewhere in this world, he's still alive. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Of course he did. You ruined his reputation as a prosecutor. You effectively killed the prosecutor in him. Just like your victory muddied my honorable name, Von Karma. I'm going to find him. And then I'm going to teach him his rightful place with my own two hands. Nick, um, about Mr. Edgeworth. Maya, I already told you this once. Don't make me do it again. Don't bring up his name in front of me again, okay? Nick? Miss Von Karma? What? I don't know if you are you are God's gift to prosecutors or not, but I've had enough of you. Him too! What? What in the world happened? Hmm. This dog is all bark and no bites. He's already been defeated. Regardless, I have nothing to inform you two of today. Tomorrow will be the greatest courtroom battle this country has ever seen. <laughs> I like how you said because I'm the cat in the curiosity killed the cat. It's like you were just killed. <laughs> but 
the full phrase is but satisfaction brought it back or i believe at least maybe it's like just an addition that some people use sometimes But, like, the same for Buffy applies to this, okay? If you want to know something, go through me, alright? Ask me about stuff. Don't go looking it up yourself, because that's spoiler territory. But, yes, considering that, um... After Miles's... After Edgeworth's... <laughs> After Edward's father uh, death, Manfred von Karma took him under his wing, and he already had Francisca, so they grew up together. Nick, let's go. We need to talk with the performer on the third floor. I know it does, but it ruins so much. Okay, can you please, like, refer from doing that in the future? I would really... Please ask me about Ace Attorney stuff, too, if, like, there's anything that you, like, are curious about. Because it quickly goes into spoiler territory. I'm sorry I brought it up, Nick. You must be Phoenix Wright. I yes. Pleased to meet you. I'm Ken Dingling. But here at the cir circus, everyone just calls me Acro. Mr. Acro? Um, how do you know my name? The detective told me. He said you'd definitely show up here. Acro, you're a member of the circus as well? That's right. I mainly perform on, on the tightrope or the flying trapeze. But nowadays, all I perform is... Perform in is my wheelchair. Acro, why did you join the circus? When I was a kid, my parents failed miserably at business. Then one night, they decided to run away from it all, without me. The only person who was willing to take my parents' place was the ringmaster. The ringmaster took such incredible care of me. He was truly a lifesaver. Seems like the ringmaster was truly a saint. He was. That's why I decided to do something very important. I decided that I, I decided that I would devote my entire life to finding a way to repay him. It looks like it can. And now, look how someone repaid him for all the good in his life. It's such a shame. Sometimes I think that he was almost too kind. Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Perhaps he was too kind to his daughter. Hmm, I wonder if he spoiled Regina. Regina is so cute. She truly, she's truly a princess. Truly a princess? Are you sure that's a good thing? Um. Hmm. Do I detect a hint of a grudge against Regina? Um, I'm sorry to ask, but why are you in a wheelchair? The nerves in my legs were badly damaged. And you can't walk now? I can't even stand now. And since I live on the third floor, I can't even leave this building by myself. That's awful. The accident happened during the acrobatic session, right? Um... Psychilox. Doesn't seem like Acro's injuries were acrobatic in nature. What's on your mind, Mr. Wright? Well, exactly when were you injured? It's been almost six months since I was hurt. I injured my legs during practice. Six months ago. What in the world went on at the circus then? I stopped by yesterday and noticed that you weren't in your room. I was at the hospital all day yesterday. Ah, you went there for rehabilitation? What about the murder? Of course I knew about it. I spoke with the police before they allowed me to go to the hospital. Before I got the call from the prosecutor, I was convinced that it was all a dream. Huh? 
I just couldn't believe it when I saw what I saw. What you saw? Jeez, that sounded really ominous. What did you see, Acro? That night, I was in bed sleeping when I heard a huge sound coming from below my window. I see that the scene of the crime was right below your window. That's when I looked out the window. What did you see? He was flying straight up into the air. He? Maximilian Galactica. What? That's what I thought it'd say. You're absolutely positive that it was Max you saw flying. I'm absolutely sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Nick. Regina. She's cool, isn't she? And can you believe such a cute girl is an animal tamer? Maya has a crush. Maya has a crush. <laughs> It seems animals are not the only thing she tames. Huh? Max, the ringmaster, Ben. She's got them all under her thumb. W what do you mean by that? Hmm, maybe I went a bit overboard. It's just Regina's innocence. She was incredibly sheltered as a child. I'd say it seems that way. That's why she can't be so cruel. What? Regina is just like the animals she claims to tame. She's innocent, thus she can be cruel. I wonder what happened between Acro and Regina. I can't believe what happened to the ringmaster. Such a wonderful man. What a pity. I have no clue what to do with my life now. Sorry. The circus meant everything to me. But don't worry about me. There are still things that I have left to do in this world. I saw this monkey. <laughs> it's a monkey calendar. Acro must really love monkeys. Ew, it's a huge pile of trash. One man's trash is another monkey's treasure. I guess you're right. Look, they're all shiny things. He's even got a motorcycle exhaust. What do they call this thing? Oh, a tuba, right? Of course it's a tuba, silly. You didn't know that? Hey, it's a picture of Regina. Well, she is a shining beauty. No objections here. This bed is un incredibly well made. It's almost like a maid made it up. Even the laundry on top of the bed is folded perfectly. Nick, there's nothing unusual about that at all. It's how things are supposed to be. Can't a man respect another man for doing something said man cannot do? <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny, not gonna lie. What do you think about Max? You want to know about Max? Well, his colleagues in the circus all seem to hate him. What about you, Acro? I got my issues with him as well. But he just also happens to have a diamond shining... A diamond shining in his soul. A diamond shining in his soul? I guess you could say it, it is his pride as a performer. We didn't have that pride in ourselves before Max arrived. Honestly, I think he brought something wonderful to the circus when he came. Acro... This guy is really different from the other members of the circus. Circus. You can't even tell me about him? Oh my god, you're so useless. Actually, let's go back here and show him the fucking... Show them 
monkey. Huh. Money is a great friend to me. A pile of treasure over there is his collection, huh? It is indeed. Money will bring anything back with him. Aw, that's so cute. Yeah, I'm not great with the ladies. But I seem to be pretty popular with the animals. Okay, that's nothing apparently. What about Pepper? I don't really know. No? Okay. Uh, Grand Prix photo. Maximilian Galactica, right? You'll have to forgive me, but I try not to think about him. Hacker won't even look at it. It looks like something is really weighing on him. Okay, it's just the same. Hmm. What's this? That's what we want to know. It was posted in the cafeteria the morning before the murder. In the... Cafeteria? What happened? He suddenly looks incredibly serious. If it's got something to do with her, then you should go straight to the source. Her? Regina, ask her about it. That's strange, but okay. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah! Wonderful. Today's special must be Filet of Phoenix. Stay, stay, heal! Oh, Maya! Nick! It's you guys! I'm sorry, I guess I made a mistake. A uh, mistake? Yeah, a little one. I was thinking of teaching whatever primate was out there a lesson. But I was expecting more of a monkey than a human. A monkey? It's a pity about what happened to the ringmaster. Dad? Everyone loved him, didn't they? They must have been quite a man. He must have been quite a man. He was. I love my dad so much. I hate to say it, but she doesn't seem all that broken up about her father. That's why I feel so lonely. Now that I won't be able to see him for a while. For a while? Yeah. When Leon died, I talked with my dad and he told me that when someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. A star? That means that my dad is looking down on me from the sky. That's why I love the night so much. I can see everyone who's gone. When someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. That's kind of sweet. But I bet you there's no way that Maya believes that. What do you mean there's no way I believe that? Do you think that one day I'll be a star too? Of course! You really think so? Yeah, you will, I think. I've got a feeling that everyone is doing great up there in the sky. I wonder if everything's alright with Regina. Just to go back and clear something up, why do you want to te teach Money a lesson? Because he's a meanie. He's got something that means a lot to me. Something that means a lot to you? It must be something shiny, right? Um, actually, it's a stage costume. It's got lots of spangles. It's really beautiful. You should see it. We should? When the costume gets hit by the spotlight, it dazzles. Hey, Miss Returnee. Huh? If you saw that monkey, you'd get my costume back for me, wouldn't you? It's really important to me. Um... But of course! Leave it all up to us. Guess there's no turning down that request. Yay! You really gonna do it? I'm oh, sorry, here. Regina, have you ever seen this before? Uh, I know what this is. R really? Well, it was in my pocket for a while. It was in your pocket? This piece of paper? Was in your pocket? Hmm, I guess I noticed it was in there around breakfast time. Breakfast time? Yeah, I always take Acro his breakfast in the morning. 
That's when I also take out the trash in this room. Then I go down to the cafeteria and eat my own breakfast. That's when you realize the piece of paper was in your pocket? Yep. But since I'm not a murderer, I just figured it belonged in someone else's pocket. And then what? I wondered if the... If the, if the, if the I wondered if the person who lost it was in trouble, so... You didn't put it on the, in the on the you didn't put it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria, did you? I did. I stuck it up there. How'd you know? Hmm. So it was Regina who put it up put it up there. When did this happen? Um, the morning of the murder, I think. That explains a lot. I wonder who wrote this. Interesting. Ugh. La, 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 la. Oh, I, I gotta. There we go. A uh, bit more support. Hmm. Okay. Now where to? Do you know about any of my other? There's no denying it. Max is so cool. I want to try flying someday with Max. She's already flown off into her own little world. Nick, I want to try flying too. Uh, okay. I'll think about it. You turn on a plane. What about this? That's Pepper, isn't it? From the cafeteria. Huh. It's from the cafeteria? It's not. I remember seeing it there. Hmm, so this was the cafeteria's Pepper. You know, I'm not a big fan of Pepper. Okay, good for you, I guess. Oops, wrong way. Sorry. I get confused sometimes. All the time. Wait, actually, what if we go back to... They must have taken Max in for questioning again. There really isn't anything that we need to ask him right now anyway. You're right. I guess. Alright, let's go then. Oh, actually, let's go back to her and... Hi, huh, it's Acro! Is he in his room today? Yes, he is. We just came back from meeting with him. I hope his legs get better soon. Acro's so incredible, especially on the trapeze. The trapeze is that enormous swing hanging from the top of the tent, right? Yep, that's it. I really want to see him up there again. Acro the acrobat. That's strange. Acro doesn't seem to have very many nice things to say about Regina. But Regina seems to like Acro just fine. Okay, just, uh... Do you know anything about the box? What about this? Nothing about the box. Uh, 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 uh. My dad is currently watching a show in which the main character is a prosecutor. Interesting. Wrong. <laughs> I'm pressing the wrong buttons all over again. I hate this case. I just get confused. Okay, yeah, no, I already tried Pepper, I forgot. What about Mo? Hmm, Mo's not here. What's that? I hear something. Stop it, Nick! You're scaring me! Nick, it's money! That monkey's holding something. That's it! That's the thing that means a lot to Regina, remember? Alright. Time to take on this monkey, attorney style. Uh, 
Yikes! I tried to have a monkey to monkey talk with him. I really did. Nick, you. you. I swiped it while Money was distracted. Wow, you're really on the ball today, Nick. Let me see it, let me see it. Huh? You can see it fine from where you are. You know what I mean. I really want to try on Regina's costume. Maybe then they'll take you in at the circus and I can get some peace and quiet. Phoenix, aren't you like 25? <laughs> Why do you act like you're 50? <laughs> hmm. What's the matter now? It doesn't fit me at all. Oh well, guess it's time for you to lay off the burgers. Not to mention, it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. I'll go back here. Here you go, Regina. Yay, thank you. You really got it back for me. Don't mention it. I love you, Mr. Attorney. Uh, it's nothing. No wonder guys smelled too mush in front of this girl. Hey, Regina. That costume is yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't fit me. Huh? This costume? This isn't mine, it was Leon's. Leon's? You know, the lion she told us about. Oh, the one that someone killed. Leon, he was killed, wasn't he? That's right, my dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down, and then he opened his mouth, you know. Wah! Uh-huh, uh-huh. Usually, when he did that, I would put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, you put your head into a lion's mouth? I sure did. The people in the crowd always loved seeing me do that. They'd always start screaming. I'm sure they were screaming because they loved seeing you do that? Anyways... Oh, anyways, what was the bad thing? Oh, yeah. Leon bit someone during that practice. R Regina, everything was alright, though. Right? No, it wasn't alright. That was a problem. My dad was incredibly angry. And that's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Poor thing. Oh, okay. He doesn't have anything to say about the lion. Okay, so nothing here. So nothing and no one here. Thank God. No one here. Fuck. Hmm. Oh. Something smells fantastic. So we know it can't be Mo. Wait, I know what it is. It's burgers! Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to Bistro de Cirque, aka the cafeteria. Mm, it smells so good in here, and those burgers look great! She's drooling like she's some sort of crazed burger monster. My burgers are the best! Juicy meat, toasted buns, special sauce. They are absolutely irresistible to anyone with a hankering for a burger. I already tried showing him the lion, and he was like, I don't fucking know. One bite will send you into hamburger heaven. 
I bet. I can tell by the smell. Whoa, I'm getting hungry too. Those burgers must have some kind of special power. Shut up, I'm already hungry. I, and I ate before this. Now that the ringmaster is gone, what are you going to do? That's all I've thought about the past two days. Everyone loved Russell. You've heard Acro's story, haven't you? Like how he was adopted when he was younger? He's calmed down a bit now, but he was livid when he heard about the murder. Acro was so upset that he said he couldn't go on. He was that upset? Yes, he was. Anyways, I, I gave it some thought. Maybe I should give up on trying to be a half-baked clown. I've been thinking of trying on the ringmaster's shoes. What? Really? Max would still be an issue, though. Max? He may be a bit mean and hard to work with, but it's hard to argue his importance. He's probably the reason the circus is still around. A lot of what he says is right. Mo. All that's left is to see if everyone can get over the tragedy. You know. The tragedy? You know, what is he talking about? Croissants for dinner? Okay, that's... Something I Get over what tragedy, Mo? Huh? Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Nothing at all. He must mean the tragic death of the ringmaster, right? Yes, yes, that's it. You're right, girly. Dang, dang, dang. Correct Amundo. Doesn't even ding. Mo, I mean no disrespect here, but are you lying to us? Eh? No, not at all. What makes you think that? Just the way you said if everyone can get over the tragedy. It seemed a bit strange. It sounded like you were talking about something from a long time ago. Mo. I'm right, aren't I? Hmm, so now we're getting closer to the truth. It was about six months ago. It was just a little accident. Give me a break. Us old men have accidents. I wear big pants for a reason. Six months ago, huh? Oh, shoot. Hold on, wait. This is big brain right here. Oops, no. You wouldn't know it, but I... Um, hold on, wait. I know I can go like... Uh, you wouldn't know it, but I was responsible for, t for naming all the animals at the circus. You name Money the monkey and Regent Re Regina's tiger? And then he says something and I can't. But Leon got his name from the ringmaster. Really? Okay, cool. There we go. He always said keep names simple and easy to associate. Nick's name is easy to associate, right, right? I always told Russell. If that's what you think, then call him Lion the Lion. It's a great name, don't you think? Imagine if he could talk. I'm Lion. Ha 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 Lion. But that's when Russell said, don't lie to yourself. That name is awful. Okay, I'm gonna... Save real quick. Not that I actually need it, but I'm gonna save anyways. Because I'm scared. Mo, please tell us what happened six months ago. What in the world went on at the circus? Okay, okay, there's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there! Some juicy burgers! Let's eat instead! Unfortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich my man myself. Ah. Uh. Actually, I've kind of got an idea of what happened back then. 
Mo, you said something about an accident. This wouldn't happen to be the cause of that accident, would it? I heard a little bit about it from Regina. Leon made a mistake during a practice, right? How did you? I told them so many times. You shouldn't be doing such dangerous acts. Like putting her, like putting her head inside Leon's mouth, right? Yeah, but Regina believed in Leon. She believed so strongly that the ringmaster went along. He never could say no to her. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo. Don't clam up on me now. Who did Leon bite on the head? Well, um, I promised I wouldn't say anything. You promised? He's involved in this too. He's involved? Huh? Mo must be talking about... Is this the person that you promised you wouldn't say anything? It must have been Acro, right? How? How did you know? Don't worry about that, Mo. Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the ringmaster. No. No way! I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Acro. Yes! Sweet! And my bar is full again. Thank God. It's just like you said, you know, the accident. Did someone die? No, but it would have been... It would have probably been better if he had. What? How would that have been better? He's still alive. But when he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. He'll never recover from the coma that he's in. Coma? All he does now is lie in his bed at the hospital. And that's all he's ever going to be able to do. I see. How is he related to Acro? He's his brother. Huh? The person who got bit was, was Acro's brother. Uh, brother? They were an acrobat team of brothers. Acro and Bat. Cute nicknames, I thought. Anyway... They were an incredible team, cut down together in their prime. Um, who is Acro's younger brother? Sean Dingling, but everyone always called him Bat. He fell in love with Regina, trying to win her love was his downfall. Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina. Six months ago, while we were practicing, all of a sudden, Bat blurts out, Let me perform with Leon! Why do you do that? I don't know. But that's what caused the accident. I'll never forget that moment. It was so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. He was... Smiling. He? You mean Leon? Yes, Leon. When he bit down, he was smiling. Some sick grin. No way! That's impossible! A smirking lion. A flying murderer. Why does it seem that it's always Mo who catches all of these incredible events? Nick, can lions smile? Um... We never told the police about the incident. The circus would have been shut down if we had. The next day, the ringmaster took Leon out and shot him with a rifle. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. But all this truthfulness has put me in the mood for a burger. Here, you two have some pepper. Shaka 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 shaka. There he goes again, acting like his normal crazy self. Huh? Huh? Achoo! Achoo! Nice! What a wonderful sneeze! Huh? You think so? You sneeze with pepper and slip on a banana peel. That's basic clown clownmanship. I didn't sneeze, by the way. That was fake. <laughs> Girlie, I know you gotta understand that. Nick, I think I'd make a good clown. Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter sneezer. <laughs> Does Regina sneeze with pepper too? 
She does. Bat would always tease her with Pepper. Bat? From my point of view, those two always looked so perfect together. They looked perfect together, huh? How is Max younger than this dude? I don't think he's got anything more to say. When you think about it, he really was a good guy. He truly liked Regina. He would try anything to get her attention. He seems like a good guy. Back then, Acro was always laughing. But I guess that everything backstage at the circus isn't always rosy. I see. It's harder than you think, making people laugh all the time. Okay, let me go and talk to Acro then. Because she apparently has no fucking clue who that is. Ah, oh, Mr. Wright. Back again, I see. Well, he did say I'll be back. Wait, or was that someone else? We're back because Acro is hiding why his legs were injured. He was hurt in the accident six months ago. It would seem that he knows what we know. Oh well, it seems you've got things you want to talk about, so fire away. Really, I've been confined to this room, so I don't have a clue what's going on with the circus. Okay, cool. I guess that just means that we're ready to do this. I have to ask you, how were you injured? I'm sorry, I thought we talked about this. It was an accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice. Yes, unfortunately, acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it secret. Acro, are you really telling me that, the, that, that a practice accident was the cause of your injury? Lay on. Six months ago, you were attacked by the lion. That's when you were injured. I know I'm on the right track. I just need to keep going. You're saying that I was attacked by a lion? That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. I'm no animal tamer. If a lion was coming at me, I'd be running for the exit. Okay, maybe attacked is not the best word to be using. So let me rephrase that as battle the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it. You had to fight it to save someone. Bat. It was a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. When you tried to save him, you tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got the terrible injury. Mo, oh, he must have told you. Yes, we learned about Bat from Mo, but he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. I suppose it was just a slip of the tongue on, on his part. That's how I figured it out. A slip of the tongue? Anyways, they were an incredible team, cut down together in their prime. Cut down together. That was where you slipped. And that's how I figured it out. You two ended up at the center of the same accident together. Like always. I see. But an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. I still haven't broken Acro's last psyche lock. This must be the one incredibly... This must be one incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't anyone's fault. Do you care to explain more? Acro, I know you're still hiding something from me. Maybe someone you don't seem to like much is the reason you're being evasive. Regina, you always seem calm and collected until you start talking about her. Saying things like she's cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. You've got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know... Her tiger tried to attack me. 
Regent tried to attack you? Twice. <laughs> he wasn't serious, I'm sure. You're not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred on Leon to attack Bat, are you? Leon was never taught a command to attack people. Regina isn't capable of, capable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina. I've got proof of it. What? What are you talking about? Oh, maybe I overdid it again. But if I can hand something over to Acro, maybe it'll... Here's proof that you had it out for Regina all along. It's this, right? Yeah. Th this. Where did you get it? Regina posted it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. Hmm, I guess I noticed it was there around breakfast time. I always take Akro his breakfast in the morning. You wrote this, and then you put it in her, in her pocket. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Well done, Mr. Wright. My legs were injured by Leon. Six months ago, my younger brother Bat had a dare with Regina. A dare? An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside of Leon's mouth like you do, you have to go to the movies with me on a date. That's insane! Didn't he know how dangerous that is? We all thought he was being stupid too, but that lion was very old to begin with. And age brought with it countless experience in doing that very trick. Unfortunately, this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the accident happened. He just wanted to take her out to the movies. Poor Bat. When Leon chomped down, I jumped towards him. Then Leon attacked me and that's how I ended up. What about Bat? He's still in a coma. I went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. I'm still waiting for him to open his eyes again. And that's the reason why I keep going. Bat and Regina. They were such great friends. Oh yeah, I wanted to take a look one of you to take a look at this. What is it? This is this is the scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. Gross, it's covered in blood. This scarf, it was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the accident. Hmm. When he did it, he looked like he was smiling. He? Leon, obviously. Oh! When he bit down on Bat's head, the expression on Leon's face looked like a grin. Nick! I know, Mo said the same thing. What do you think it all means? I'll be taking that scarf if you don't mind. Miss Von Karma, I've already heard everything, so hand over the scarf. But the scarf is evidence in the trial. That is for me to decide. I think we should begin our preparations now, Acro. Preparations? I've served a summons to Acro to appear in court tomorrow as a witness. Acro, we'll talk more at the prosecutor's office. Acro... A witness? Come, Acro, let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. Now what do we do, Nick? What are we going to handle tomorrow? How are we going to handle tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. Look at you all full of confidence. You must have found something you can use. This is all beginning to come together now. All right. Huh. Two parts left. We'll talk more in the office because I will, I will manipulate you to put the guilty verdict. Yeah, pretty much. Good morning, Max. Oh, yeah. Good morning, sweeties. You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. Teehee. 
Oh, don't get nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie pie, my sweetie pie princess! You came to watch my performance today? Of course I did! Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that. So, what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess, you'll fly at the end? Uh, it's not that kind of show. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on or even where she is. Hmm. Well, Max, it looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today I'm just a member of the audience. Fabulous. Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? Top of the morning to you. Everybody, let's get ready to get stuck in legal limbo. How low can you go? M Mo. Top of the morning to you, governor. Uh, top of the morning. That's the ticket. Attacking the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets the worm. But then again, worms lack higher brain function. Aha, 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 aha. Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk. Oh my, Th thanks. So, how are you today, right? Well, I've got the feeling that today I'm going to face off against the real culprit. You mean Acro? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line, literally. He's got guts to spare. If all I got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is, I'm used to it already. It just means that I won't be able to press him like I can other witnesses. What are you going to do then, Nick? I guess today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare. Today we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Acro and to the truth. You're right, but it's gonna be tough. Anyways, I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes, that's why I brought her here to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. They may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. The persecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Miss von Karma, you may proceed with your case. The prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness, or shall I say, a new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fl fly from the scene of the crime. Order! Order! I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the seed on my orders. Poor gumshoe. Very well. Please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work, or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. Name and occupation. Gumshoe needs a raise. Gumshoe just needs, like, steady pay. <laughs> Ken Dingling, but everyone calls me Acro. I'm employed as an acrobat at the very big circus. Where were you on the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map, you will see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Huh. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. It was just after 10pm and I was resting in my bed. 
Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Then a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's what it looked like. To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. Hmm. This witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. A man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, did. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Miss Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? There's no way that actually happened. Very well. You may proceed with your cross-examination. Please stop hurting Wright's poor, broken gay heart. The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true, I was going to bed after all. So with the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window. The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouettes up silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. And maybe there was something fishy with this la latest bit of testimony. There is a contradiction! There is a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm, she's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim of a contradiction? You claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well... You should have tried looking down, out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found on, found on the scene. That, that's the ringmaster's hat, right? Afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk, silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? No, this is a handmade, one-of-a-kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means, Acro, that you've been fibbing on the stand. Order! Order! As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury on this court today? In this court today? Am I just gonna, like, accuse him, like, right now? Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion, a accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. Ha ha ha. I think your trips to the circus have served you well. You seem to have learned how to try and grab at an audience's hearts and minds. 
Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. Really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. He's calm enough for it to almost be scary. Hmm. He is staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Dingling. <laughs> do you have any response to the defense's ac accusation? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. That's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of a murder of all things. See? Even a sliver of common sense makes it clear. The accusation is ludicrous. She's right. Way to pick on the disabled, you heartless, cruel man. Phoenix is a poopy head. See that, Mr. Phoenix Wright? If you're trying to drum up support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. <laughs> I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note to confirm that Acro is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter this as well? I can hear the defense now. Acro had an accomplice. What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Acro have an accomplice? Now then. This must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. What? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Order! Order! What the... What are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick. Now I'm going to have to prove how it all fits together. I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. All right, then let's do it. Mr. Phoenix Wright, if this... <laughs> if this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Hmm, Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Dingling? He was obviously here the entire time. That's Acro's room. Pretty simple, huh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingling? It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that, that what you propose is impossible? Yes, that's it. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, wheelchair there is no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. Hmm, you got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Mo said that he saw Max, didn't he? But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm, how did he do it? It's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here... She's right, I can't mess up here. I've got to give this, some, this one some serious thought. I'm sure that Acro killed the ringmaster, and he did it while he was in his room. No doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime, Mr. Wright. 
me save. I already saved. I'm going to present some evidence. So what did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a large bust, and because it is life-sized, it's also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death, especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! See? This is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster. With the force of gravity and Maximilian Galactica's ample bust. Order! Order! It's like you were saying, the bust fell onto the Ringmaster. A rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible! Well, Acro is an acrobat. He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bust. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? Well, Acro's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Acro. Ow! And what would I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm. Testimony, you say? Upon karma. She's just using this testimony as a rouse to stall for time. There is absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its... Has its her. The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't he see things my way once in a while? Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. Ah, oh, that woman will sink to any low to win a case. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would, would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus, it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? Hmm, I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have, would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? Hmm, I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Uh, can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. I know exactly what I need. Uh, there's no way I could have exerted. No, that's not it. This. What do you say would be impossible? Allow me to explain. You accept that if I was carrying the bust, I couldn't see, see out below the window. Thus, there is no way that I would know the location of the ringmaster's head. Well, I suppose you've got a point. Hey, Nick. Huh? What if you turn things around? Maybe if you think of it sort of like this. If he knew the location of the ringmaster's head, then he could drop the bust. That does make sense. If only I could prove it somehow. That Acro knew the location of the ringmaster's head without looking down. I think I've already explained things sufficiently.
Yes! Acro, you didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may, my, may add. You silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? But, but I did such a good job hinting. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the victim... Oh, no, sorry. The same wooden box that the victim was found hounched over? The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bust came falling down was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up his wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... If the bust were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box... There would be no way that it would, could miss the head of the, of the victim. No! Order! 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 This is unbelievable! Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going, and there's only one way to go from here. Forward. So the next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Allow me to whip some sense into you. Mr. Phoenix Wright! The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. S specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar feature. The box has a remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down, then lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in, in approximately the same place. Fool! Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. You... Did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? I remember. Of course I remember. It was on the top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm, then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. That means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Explain that. Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Uh huh. Tell us exactly how the witness could have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happen once and for all. Alright, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room?
a monkey. Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe I should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Ah! Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bust back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Order! Order! I said order! Miss Von Karma! Where is the bust in question at the moment? At this moment? Um, 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 I, uh, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Hmm, this is a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Then you mean this bust was the murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Acro saw money smelting the stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. Moron! Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! Don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of her magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ah! There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. That is true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the murderer the cl clown saw? He saw Max's... I asked who was the other person Mo saw on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frère. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. How was that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. It will be easy to hang one of the cards in the bust's hands. Idiot. Who in the right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? Oh, he caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? F fool! Him? You're saying it was the victim himself? Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust? Placed the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. 
Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm doing fucking amazing right now. I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. Actually, I already did. I already did it like before this case started because I'm like, I know this case so well. It's fucking awful, but God, if I fucking know it. <laughs> There's probably only one picture I can paint anyways. All right. So you want to know what really happened that night. Let's step back in time. Akira used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust. Okay, yeah, but... How did he... I get, I get how he got the box down there, but how did he get the rope back? I assume he had to tie a knot. I assume there also actually is, like, a knot that, like, can easily get, like, unraveled without, like, doing it by accident. Like, by, like, a certain tug or something? I don't know. I don't know much about ropes. But, like, that's the only thing that I, I can't make any sense out of in this entire case. <laughs> and dangled the bust out of his, his bedroom window, directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared... He was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house by none other than the ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bust hit the victim, Wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little, uh, it's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. The circus isn't over yet. What? The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. That impact also caused the sound of a certain witness sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was of course Lawrence Moe Curls, the clown. When Moe looked out of his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bust being raised with a cloak dangling on it. Primarily because in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. I mean, to be fair, he could have, like, put up some mirrors or something. I don't know. I don't know how he would have done that, but, you know. So he just kept pulling the bust up. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off... It's the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro, it could only have been you. There's still like one chapter left, I believe. This is just part one of the trial. Akra's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You grace us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Oh, how did it go? How did your assignment go? E evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. 
I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Mo's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay then! Use that and get us out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourself. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that your claims. Oh, no. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. That's not it. <laughs> Try again. Okay. Well, I thought that there were no footprints, so like, duh. If they had been silent for two more seconds, I would have screamed. Um, I'm accusing Acro right now. Nick, they say they want evidence. I just explained how there could only be one possible murder murder method. But there is still something unusual about Mo's eyewitness account. But what was his eyewitness account? The problem is Max's three symbols. Okay, what's the hat? You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Mo's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the busts. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what that ventriloquist said in court? He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course, I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Order! Order! This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe Von Carl will finally throw in the towel. Oh, God. Well, so much for that theory.
Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible depth of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Akro's story. Learn about his relationship with the ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Akro deeply respected the ringmaster. Akro's motive. Hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. Sorry, his name. I can't. These names. <laughs> this court will now take a ten-minute recess. I'm almost out of water. Whew. Okay, let me just check how long the last part is. Forty minutes. Give or take. That's fine. I got forty minutes. Okay. Here we go. I can't believe it. Acro? It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is, and to think he was always the most straightforward of the group. Jeebus, am I that hated? Ahem. <clears throat> Akro tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... he did? Psst, psst, ahem. <clears throat> but... but... I'm nothing but a little old nobody, you know. But you're not, which is kind of the reason why... Ahem! <clears throat> hey, hey pal! You're gonna ignore me after I went to all this trouble to bring you some evidence? Huh, <laughs> Detective Gumshoe! Oh, forget it, I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyways. Now, now, detective, I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax a little? You've got some really tasty milk. How about a card trick, detective? Ho ho ho, well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned, what is it? Here you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Akro's room. Yep, and I've included the forensic results. Take a look at it later. Won't Miss Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? That's why this is all a secret. Huh? Look, details are on the need to on the need to know basis, and we're not really allies or anything. But everything that happens in court up and that's happened in uh, Why am I struggling so much? That's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. I don't know. Miss Von Karma didn't seem in control of things in there just now. We'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday, our final plans were set into motion. Final plans? Uh-huh. That reminds me. I've got a message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. What did he mean by that? The very end part. I'm not sure. It was all pretty cryptic to me. Oh, one more thing. Ah, don't scare me like that. It looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. The reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. An entire dairy's worth of milk? For me? Of 
court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akro's testimony starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Akro would have to commit his, this crime. Understood. Now, Mr. Dingling. Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Well... When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the ringmaster of the very big circus, Russell Berry, took us in. I became an acrobat at around nine years old. I wanted to find a way to repay the ring ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. Hmm, you are such a thoughtful young man. As you heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could think that Acro would kill the man he held in such esteem. You're absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Which is why there's no real need for a cross-examination, is there? Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the ringmaster? This might be my last chance to answer that question. Of course I'll cross-examine. The defense has a right to cross-examine the witness. Hmm. Huh. You're so tactless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You don't care about justice, do you? You just want to fabricate a motive. You know, I could say the same about you. <laughs> what? Very well, Mr. Wright. Cross-examine the witness. Huh. We? Yes, my brother Sean and I. What? You have a brother? How old were you when this happened, Acro? I was eight years old and my brother was four. Hmm, your parents were very cruel, were they? Weren't they? Nowadays, we aren't bitter about what happened to us. Because it allowed us to meet the wonderful people at the very big circus. Nick, the judge is getting misty-eyed. He's got a soft spot for sob stories, it looks like. Ow! <laughs> No crying in court. Let's keep going. The witness may proceed with his testimony. What do you think, Nick? I don't know. I think the more I cross-examine him, the worse I end up looking in the end. You mean... I get the feeling that this cross-examination was a trap. Yeah, Fun Karma set you up again. How would you describe your relationship with the ringmaster? He was like an uncle, a father, and a big brother all rolled up into one. The ringmaster and my brother were the only family I had. Hmm. What about the other people at the circus? Circus? This was over 15 years ago. Back then, there were very few customers coming in. So no one really had the time to look after us. They were worried about other things. But the ringmaster... He would always come see us with a laugh and a smile. What a beautiful story. That's why I was always thinking of what I could do to help. I wanted to thank him. Nick, isn't Akro such a wonderful person? I know, he seems like a nice guy. Which is what makes this so difficult. Hmm, so then, how long have you been a performer? I became an acrobat at around nine years old. You started off as an acrobat at, at that early of an age? I begged the ringmaster until he finally agreed to let me do it. Ever since then, I've been in incredible physical shape. That's also when I decided to form a group with my brother. We called ourselves the Flying Dingling Berries. The Dingleberries? <laughs> it's nearly a household name. I even heard of them in Germany. Liar. The point is that I wanted to be some be of some use to the circus. Hmm, you are truly a remarkable young man. Okay, I have been ripped since I was nine. <laughs> Pretty much. The judge keeps looking at Acro almost like a proud father. Hmm. Did 
Did you ever have any trouble with the ringmaster? Ow! How could you ask such a thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have some sort of fundamental mis misunderstanding of this witness's testimony? Or the heartfelt emotions contained within? You better think about this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You better think hard. Ow! Ow, 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 ow! Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's no way I could see this witness ever taking the victim's life. Exactly. I've been waiting for you to say that, Your Honor. Nick, I hate to say this, but I agree with them. I was trying to chase down the truth, but I ended up just looking like a jerk. I think that will be enough for now. Pondering whether or not this man would kill the ringmaster leads me to believe that... It is pretty unlikely. Exactly right, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Your Honor. I would just like to know, can you provide an explanation as to why Acker would want the ringmaster dead? No. Nick? Yeah, I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor, the reason that Acker killed the ringmaster is something that can't be proven. What? That's because Acker had no reason to kill the ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool us like the f Sorry. Your foolish attempts to fool us like foolish fools is so foolheartedly foolish. Did you forget? You made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was. This is the real killer of Russell Berry, Ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yes, that sounds about right. The end of things? Acro. You didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? The Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What did you just say? I am saying that the target of this witness's murderous plot was not the ringmaster. Because it was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. What? Order! Order! Bailiff, I don't care who it is. Smack anyone who's loud in the face. Twice if you must. Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to my court? Ow! Mr. Phoenix Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to his court? Are you attempting to imply that Acro is trying to kill someone else? Oh boy, am I. Regina Berry? This young girl is the ringmaster's daughter, correct? Acro, you were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? You don't need to answer that. It's a mean-spirited leading question. He could easily answer this question. If I'm... If I'm wrong, all he has to say is, You're wrong. That's it. That's it. Huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough. Mr. F Mr. Wright, allow me to... Ow! The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. Huh? And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence. Now. I want to know why Acro would want to kill Regina Berry. Yes, me too. I demand to see some proof. I'm saving. Present evidence that proves Acker was out to kill this young girl. Um, hmm. Oh, by the way, the scarf. Bat scarf stained with his blood and a small quantity of pepper. Yeah, no, that's not it. It's either this or this. It's a note. Acro, you remember this, don't you? That's 
It's a piece of paper that we found inside the ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat? Acro wrote this note. It's ironically entitled, To the Murderer. Its purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. So you're saying that he called Russell Berry with that note? Yes, but there's just one little problem. Problem? Acro did indeed place this note into somebody's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean, it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other than Regina Berry. Order! 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 M Mr. Wright, this little theory of yours is the truth, Your Honor. It isn't the theory. Simply put, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why, the morning of the crime, she placed it on the cafeteria bulletin board. That's when her father, I mean, the ringmaster, saw the note. That's correct. The ringmaster ended up in that place, in that plaza, instead of Regina. And he was killed because of that mistake, instead of Regina. That's... That's... That's incredible! Remember the testimony that Acro gave us earlier today. Lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. If I were to do that, I'd end up falling out of the window myself. Acro had no idea who it was that arrived in the plaza. Because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. I've got it! I've got it! Acro thought it was Regina down in the plaza! And that's when he let the bus fly. Hey Nick, isn't Regina listening to all of this from the audience? She is, unfortunately. It's only going to get harsher from here. I hope Regina can handle it. Acro wrote this note to Regina! Foolishly foolish fool with foolishly foolish fool. F fool ideas of foolish tomfoolery. You're so foolish that you've... You've even made me sound like a foolhardy fool. Very well, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If you're so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Yes? What about that line? Well, if the note was meant for Regina Berry, it would mean that. This note is declaring that Regina Berry is a murderer. You just don't get it, do you? What? What did you just say? The ringmaster knew what the note meant, which is why he went to the plaza. In place of his lovely daughter. H hold it right there, Mr. Wright! What is this incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. I know all about it. An incident occurred six months ago. And now I am more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Moron! Wait, are you sure that it relates to this, to the present case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case has its start in what happened six months ago. Really, Nick? I, um, I think so? Well then, if that's the case, hurry up and tell us about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in the note? I know I'd certainly like to know what it is. If I can't answer that question, the judge is going to think I'm bluffing. The, con the conclusive evidence about the incident six months ago is actually... Hmm. Achoo! 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 What kind of spicy joke is this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? It isn't a joke at all. It's the decisive evidence you asked for. What do you mean? Recall that the victim was trying to take the wooden box away with him. He was doing so because this piece of decisive evidence is what was inside. Another unbelievable conclusion. Very well, Mr. Wright. So what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Berry killed someone with a small bottle of pepper? Taking the note into account, that's the only logical conclusion you can draw. Foolish fool who never tires of his own foolish ways. If you're so sure, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then answer this question. Who was Regina Berry's intended victim? Regina Berry's intended victim, you. Yeah. 
Who is this? That is Akro's younger brother. What does this prove? His younger brother isn't dead. Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months now. It's not a stretch to see how Akro could feel that his brother is dead. Regina, she did that to him? Do you spend your entire life dreaming up new ways to be a fool? Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Akro's brother, Sean Dingling. Six months ago, he was bit by a lion and fell into the, his current comatose state. A uh, lion? Regina, I mean, Miss Regina Berry, is an animal tamer by trade. However, no tamed animal in that position is ever trained to attack another human. They wouldn't understand the command. Moreover, Miss Regina would never do something like that. It's just not in her. Even the girls are crushing on Regina. <laughs> hmm, so then what happened to Akro's brother? He's not the victim of an attempted murder. He's the victim of an accident. I see. Now what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bab was actually an accident? It was more than that. The lion biting Bab was no accident at all. What? You're such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix Wright. There is no way that Regina would ever incite her lion to attack another human being. She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being, but Regina is responsible for making the lion bite Akro's brother, Bat. That's... that's just a scarf! Akro. This scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who is the one that gave this scarf to Bat? Regina. Regina gave it to him. Regina? There's something more than just blood on this scarf, Your Honor. And what might that be? Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. Regina gave this scarf to Bat right before the accident, and she covered it with, pep with as much pepper as she could. Hey, what's with the silent treatment? Um, excuse me, Mr. Wright. You've done a good job of fingering a criminal. <laughs> Oh, they say there's an Apollo Justice too, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> he did what? <laughs> it means like pointing out, right? I, I, at least I hope that's what it means. <laughs> but out of curiosity, what was her crime? Um, Miss Berry gave a pepper-covered scarf to Bat as a present. Where's the crime in that? It still seems like the judge just doesn't get it. The fault in our crimes. <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright, wasn't it said that the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? The lion was smiling? Right before Bab was bit by, by, by the lion. For a moment, the lion's mouth changed and it looked like he was smiling. Lions? Smile? I've never heard of them smiling. However, lions sneeze. <laughs> Leon wasn't trying to bite Bat at all. In reality, all he actually did was sneeze. He sneezed because of all the pepper on the scarf. What? You fool! You've got to be kidding me. What's the matter, Miss Von Karma? I... I object, for objection's sake. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you... This theory, you believe it? You really intend to say that this is how this joke of an accident actually happened? Of course I do. It's the truth. The lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Akro nearly lost his brother due to this accident, or this joke, as you put it. 
Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what happened. Which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot! Huh. <laughs> it almost does seem like a terrible joke, doesn't it? Once again, I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. To think that there's someone who treats this accident with the respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I said was true? Acro! You don't mean! You can't mean! Witness! Are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright. Unfortunately, your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pepper, the scarf, the lion. I see where you're going, but it's a bit hard to swallow. Not to mention the fact that there is an even bigger problem with your theory. What would that problem be? The same problem it's always been. Evidence. If I drop Ma Max's bust on top of the ringmaster. Where is the evidence that proves that claim? Uh... Hmm... You mean the conclusive evidence? But the biggest problem is the murder weapon, or the lack thereof, to be more precise. The murder weapon. The bust that the defense claims was used. If that were to be found in Akro's room, and if it was covered with the victim's blood, that would be awfully conclusive in my eyes. Yes, it would be. The bust. Nick, you've got to do something. This is the last step. If I get this one right, the case is won. <laughs> the pepper, the scarf, the line, the next thing you know, we're in Narnia. <laughs> oh yeah, the pepper is my favorite part of Narnia. <laughs> It might be worthwhile to search Acro's room, but why aren't you going to search his room? It looks like you finally figured things out, didn't you? Now you know the true meaning of fun karma, total justice. I guess, I figured with you, that's the least I should expect. You'd leave no stone unturned. A fun karma never leaves anything to chance. We've already searched Acro's room yesterday. What did you find? There's no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in that room, Akko would not be here as a witness. But to put a point on it, Max's bust was not in the room. The murder weapon was still unaccounted for. You see, Mr. Wright? The bust wasn't in my room. Furthermore, Detective Dick Gumshoe executed the search by complete surprise, and we took Akko directly to the prosecutor's office after that. End of story. Just wait a second. Something's funny about all this. <laughs> it looks like you lack the final nail to put in into my coffin. But, but, what about the scarf? What about the note? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only evidence that is relevant here is that which, is that which pertains to the death of the ringmaster. You should know that by now. Ah! <sighs> Do something, Nick. Don't let this case slip away. The bust, where is it now? Hmm, where is the bust right now? You're Phoenix Wright. You know where that bust is. I'm sure you do. There's not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bust is? It seems this case is coming to a close. The defense's counter-arguments look to have fallen short. Thank you for your support. Ugh. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I think that brings to an end the cross-examination of this witness. I knew it. Where is Max's bust? The defense needs time to prepare to present its, its, its lace. I mean case. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous and I just bit my tongue. Huh? What? We need time to do what? Ow! Why are you the most surprised person here? She's your aide, isn't she? Do you really have a case to present, Mr. Wright? Of 
von Karma is a horse girl. That's why she wears those clothes, and also why she has a whip. It makes sense, all right? What? Well, are you asking me? The rest is up to you, Nick. Good luck. Hey, wait, you can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the lines, don't they? That's how Acro's lived his life up until now. Now it's time for us to walk across our own tightrope. If we don't, we're certain to lose. Very well. The defense may proceed. He doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he'll be finding one anytime soon. Walking the tightrope of logic. There's no room for, for a false step. Sink or swim. The only way through is forward. <laughs> the murder weapon. Where is Max's bust now? Somewhere in this courtroom. It's obvious. The bust is inside this very courtroom. It. It's obviously where? Allow me to pinpoint the location of the bust once and for all. The witness stand. Acro. I'm sorry to ask this, but do you mind if I take the blanket off your wheelchair? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy and you have a pretty big wheelchair because of it. I just wanted to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me that it'd be really easy to, say, hide a bust under there. Huh, 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 huh. Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Wright. I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bust is under there. We all know that you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenient when Miss Von Karma happened to search your room yesterday. If she had found the murder weapon in your room, it would have been all over. Which is why you had to hide it. And the only place that you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. Which is why, Acro, I have to ask you again. Would you please remove the blanket from your lap? Well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. You! You fool! How could you! Got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. Actually, two of them. Two of them? Miss Francisca von Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch the surprise search on my room last night? There were two pieces of decisive evidence. The cloak and the bust. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. Regina always took my trash out every morning, you know. But the bust. Obviously, I couldn't throw that away. When you executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. And the only place that I could hide it quickly was under this wheelchair. Miss Von Karma, you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now to be caught in the middle of of court hiding the murder weapon. There's no way I can escape that. So you got me. Well done, Mr. Wright. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm. It all makes sense now. I can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's amazing! Uh-huh. You definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. I can't believe it. Me? Make a mistake? Why did I order a surprise search of your room? If only I hadn't done that. It seems we finally arrived at the truth. Macro. Yes, Your Honor. Did you kill the ringmaster of the very big circus, Mr. Russell Berry? Yes, Your Honor. I'm responsible for that crime. Acro. Wait, is my, like, audio, like, really loud? Like, my... Yeah, no, it's, 
It, it was right. All my brother wanted was for Regina to like him. That's why he'd tease her. One day, my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started sneezing so hard, you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. And that's why she covered the scarf with pa with pepper. With paper. <laughs> I know she didn't mean for anything bad to happen. I know this. She just wanted to make my brother sneeze a few times, too. But I just couldn't forgive her. No matter what. What am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never, ever being able to understand her. Your brother became a star. Regina believes in that so purely. That she would laugh innocently when saying it too... Saying it too innocently. I just couldn't stand it. No matter how hard I tried. That's when you decided to do something about Regina. How dreadful. So are you saying that you are a victim in all of this as well? No. That's not what I mean. I'm nothing but a murderer. That's who I am. At first, I thought I'd kill myself, then I pondered giving myself up. But I couldn't just up and leave. I just couldn't. Not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. I just... I just... I just couldn't up and leave yet. This has been such a strange case. It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me again. I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. Thus, I'd like to declare my verdict. Yay. This court is adjourned. Fabulous. This Astro by not going to jail. But to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Macro, the ringmaster, Regina, and Bat. Not a single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question, and one I don't know the answer to. Many congrats, but only at max. A million of them. Thank you. What's with the vibe in this room? We're just thinking about Acro. No, 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 no. If you worry too, if you worry about people too much, then you'll be like this forever and never be happy. Huh? <sighs> She's been like this for a while now. It's all my fault. Sweetie, sweetie pie. Not an acro. They're never coming back. No, no, everyone is gonna split up. Regina. Mr. Wright, tell me something. What do you want to know, Regina? Akra said something right at the end. I just couldn't up and leave yet. Does that mean that Akro... Is he gonna try and get his revenge on me? I don't think so. He's not gonna do that to you, Regina. Are you sure? You're really sure? I can't believe that. Yep, Akro doesn't have any desire for revenge anymore. If that's true, then I want to see some evidence. Huh? I want to know why. I don't want to know you're not just making up stuff about Agro not wanting revenge. Agro didn't want to get caught for a reason. He wanted to see his brother open his eyes again. But... That's right, Regina. He's still alive, you know. I never knew. But now that Acro's been caught... Uh-huh. I know! What? I'll do it. I'll stay next to Bat as long as it takes. 
until he opens his eyes, and then until he can meet Acro again. That's so sweet of you, Regina. I'm sorry, Acro. I'm sorry, Bat. Well, hopefully this is enough to give her a little peace of mind. Hey, Max. What is it, Mo? I really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? I'm sorry about what happened. So, whenever you'd like to leave us, I'll pay your fee and rip up the contract. I understand. What a fabulous thing to do for me. I might even leave tomorrow. What's going to happen to the circus now? Ah, uh, that's the big question. Our ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Even though he's not here anymore, everyone is sticking together. The staff, the performers, no one wants to leave the circus. That's why I've made a decision. What is it? I've decided that I will take over as a new ringmaster. I'll turn this circus into the best circus the world this world has ever seen. The best circus the world has ever seen? Don't laugh. That's quite the goal. Yay, I can't wait. Then I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus the world has ever seen needs. The world's best illusions. Which means this circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max, let's work together and make our circus super fabulous. What do you say, big guy? I don't know what to say. All I can say is thank you. Um... Um... Regina, you're gonna help them out too, aren't you? Um... I don't know. Maybe the circus would be better off without me. What are you talking about, Regina? Why do you think that I brought you to court today? Huh? We've got to work together to make the very big circus bigger than it's ever been. M Mo. Most right, sweetie pie. It can't be the very big circus without Regina Berry. Max. Nick. It seems like everything is going to turn out alright here. I can't wait to go see the best circus the world has ever seen. I'll save you the most fabulous seats. I messed up their voices. It'll take us a while to get ready, but I'm going to order special whoopee cushion seats. Aha! 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 see what made the case yesterday's surprise raid it really paid off just like you said it would sir um you had it all figured out didn't you it was just a theory a game theory if acro really was a killer i thought this was the only way it could end especially if he was a defense attorney you mean mr wright Of course. Well, detective, my plane is about to leave. As for Mr. Ackerel's case, you need not worry. I plan to personally stop by the chief prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. Understood, sir. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. He not dead! Also, by the way, um... Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death is mentioned in the game by Francisca. I found it earlier and I was like, but it was mentioned. I literally read on a fucking forum that it was not mentioned in the game. And people were like, when, why did I, how, where did I get it from? It's just like, it's implied in the game that he's dead, but. But yes. Miles Edgeworth still alive. So, that's the last case of this game, isn't it? I believe it is. Um, yeah, it is, but it's also a really long one. So, uh, Mm, I have to think about how I'm gonna do this. 
I'm streaming tomorrow with my sister. Um, some uh, mystery game. You know. <laughs> streaming over on... Uh, on Lazy Lillian Gamer Mom. Tomorrow. At 7.30 p.m. Hopefully, anyways. At that time. I don't know if it will be like a bit later or what. But, um... <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, that was... The ending is so good. <laughs> also, that case, like, it would have been, like, much better if it weren't for the f fucking clown. Though it actually turns out to be, like, a an okay character in the end, but, like... God, when he just makes those jokes, it's too much. And I really, I really relate to Phoenix and when he just goes, Ugh. <laughs> Honestly. Um, so, yeah. Oh my god. Anyways, yeah. Edgeworth is back. How cool is that? The clown is the worst part. The clown is for sure the worst part. Huh, and I did say that it would be like six, did I say seven hours? Maybe. And look, here we are, six hours and 30 minutes. All right, let me try something. Does it work now? I guess not. <laughs> did I just remove the thing? Okay. It must be wizard. No, I just planned this way too, like, perfectly. So I'm like, um, I want to do the last case on Sunday. But if I can't finish it on Sunday, I will have to continue it on Monday. Because I don't want to have, like, long breaks between. I want to do it in, like, consecutive days, you know. I guess the uptime thing didn't work. Whatever, it's fine. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, I don't really know what to say. It's it's a kind of sad case. It's not. I don't think it's the saddest case, but it's one of the saddest cases. I think. Just because. He just wanted to see his brother again. Like, he wanted to see his brother open his eyes again. Like, that's all he wanted. It's kind of fucked, but, uh... Yeah. So... No one was really a bad guy. Yeah. I think that's what makes this case interesting, like, compared to the other ones. <laughs> Because, yes, of course, his plan was awful, and it was just, you know, really bad. But, like, he didn't do it because he was a bad person. He just wanted to see his brother again. Not that that would have helped anyways, but, like, yeah, I also feel sorry for him. I, I almost started crying when he started crying. But not quite, but <laughs> yeah. So now I am gonna turn off for the day and get something to eat before I go to bed. And uh, yeah, that's that's really all there is to it. Thank you, thank you so much for being here once again. I know I can always count on you on being in my chat. Really appreciate that. And uh, I hope to see you on tomorrow's stream with my sister and also on Sunday when where I will at least start the last case of this. But I will probably start it a bit earlier. So that means I will have to 
have like a, a, a food break at some point. <laughs> On Sunday, I mean. But uh, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll even drop by McDonald's and just get some burgers or something. <laughs> But yeah, good night everyone. I hope you have a lovely day or night or whatever it is for you right now. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.